Public Plan Commission makes recommendations to the City Council on public hearing items. The City Council will make a final decision on these items using the Planning Commission recommendations as a guide. Items reviewed at tonight's meeting may be considered by the City Council as early as August 22nd, 2017. Items not approved by the Planning Commission may be appealed to the City Council within 30 days after Planning Commission denial. If an item is appealed to the City Council, a public notice sign will be placed on the property at least seven days prior to the City Council meeting. A public notice will be placed on the City's website, www.cityofconway.org. <coughs> I thank you all for coming out tonight. We have a full agenda. One thing I would like to say before we get started good is that those of you here for the dire request for a conditional use permit to allow general retail in an 01 zoning district for the property located at 2545 Prince Street, that has been uh, postponed until September 18th. So if you're here for that, you can go ahead and stay and hang out or you can leave. But I wanted to let you know that so you didn't stay for the whole agenda. All right, so I need to uh, also lay the guidelines for the meeting. For each topic that we have tonight, the first person for a topic will have 10 minutes. Each subsequent speaker will have two minutes. First person against a topic or an, <coughs> an item will have 10 minutes. Each subsequent person will have two minutes. All right, the first thing on the agenda is report from the sub. I mean, uh, approval of the minutes from July 17, 2017. Motion to approve. Second. There's a motion on the floor to approve the minutes. Second. Has been seconded. Any discussion? Clarification. All right, all those in favor, signify by raising your hand. Aye. 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 Opposed? All right. The uh, report from the subdivision committee, uh, Madam Chairperson. Yes, uh, Mr. Chairman, the subdivision committee met and concerning the Willow Oak Manor preliminary <laughs> subdivision, all items are, have been or are being addressed and were approved um, pending the final approval of the punch list. And concerning the Robin Marr preliminary subdivision phase one, uh, the items of concern are being or have been corrected and uh, many of them, some of them, depend upon approval by the street department and the fire department and approval of the final punch list. Thank you. Thank you. You're very I'll entertain a motion to accept the committee report as read. Second. Just take it to have that. Second it. All right. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Opposed? All right. First item on the agenda tonight is D1, mm. Soul Food Cafe Mission Request to Rezone from A1 to R2A. Uh, do I have someone to speak for this? Remember, the first person gets 10 minutes, each subsequent person gets two. Sir? You'll please approach the mic over there and state your name and your address, please. My name is Rick Harvey. I'm the founder and the director, uh, along with my wife of Soul Food Cafe Mission. I live at 168 Sunshine Farms Road, and that's in Bigelow, Arkansas. Um, I'm here tonight to talk to you about Soul Food Cafe Mission because people don't understand what it is. Soul Food Cafe Mission is a church. It was actually established back in 1993 by Pastor Burl York. It was uh, later on, uh, I was the pastor for about six months, and it, we turned this into a, a, a very unique church where we reached out and began to help those that are in need. One of the doctrines of our church, one of the basic teachings that we teach is found in Matthew chapter 25 and verse 34 through 40, where Jesus was talking to his followers and said, you know, you've clothed me, you've fed me, you, you sheltered me. And they were astonished and said, Lord, when did we ever do that? And he said, you know, when you've done it unto the least of these, my brethren, you've done it unto me. And so we follow that, and, and we don't just talk about it, we don't just preach about it, we actually do it, and that is our church. We've been actually doing this since 2001 for 16 years. Uh, we've got a really good reputation in the community. As a matter of fact, there's a, a notebook there, a three-ring binder notebook, that will tell you a little bit about Tracy and I and our background. Um, 
I'm not trying to brag on myself at all, but to give you some source of credibility for me, I graduated at UCA with a business degree. It was a two-year degree. I went on to uh, Southwestern University in Waxahachie, Texas, and I got a four-year degree there in pastoral ministries and evangelism. I've also been an insurance agent for 25 years. I teach a class for pre-licensing as well as continuing ed at the Big Eye, which is a property and casualty company in North Little Rock. Um, and then, of course, we've been doing Soul Food Cafe Mission. I have been a licensed and ordained minister uh, for 33 years. The history of the Soul Food Cafe Mission is the next chapter here, and I only have 10 minutes, so I'm just going to briefly say that Christ Church began its outreach, which, by the way, we changed our name from Christ Church to Soul Food Cafe Mission, and inside your notebook, it has all the things from the state, and even the, the IRS has approved our name change. We didn't, we didn't change being a church, we just changed our name to Soul Food Cafe Mission. So Christ Church began its outreach in the community, providing hot meals, food boxes, um, clothing, furniture, appliances, haircuts, showers, laundry, health, beauty, and home items to help the less fortunate to even have a joyful Christmas in Conway, we started Our Children Toy Drive. You see us at the Walmart where we collect toys. And then we, we work with the Dream Center now of New Life Church where they have a Christmas mall, so we attribute to that as well. Um, the Sofa Cafe mission, mission statement is to provide a place for people in our community of those passing through, receive without hassle um, what they need without regard to their religion, without regard to their race, their creed, their origin. There's no prejudices there. We do preach the gospel of Jesus Christ at the mission, but it's done on a voluntary basis. They don't have to go through any service or any sermon to get anything that we offer to them. They can bypass it. I want you to know that. I think that's an important point. We also wanted to be a neutral territory for denominations so that it doesn't matter whether you're Baptist or Presbyterian or Catholic or you know, Assembly God, whatever you are, it doesn't really matter. You can actually come and live out what the preacher preaches on Sunday. Um, if you'll see the totals, uh, this we've got totals for three years, but just this year alone, and that goes to August, we have uh, home delivered 297 meals. We've had 2,038 volunteers, of which several of our volunteers are here today that have come, and you see the, the red shirts, and some didn't have red shirts, but they're still here too. We've served 9,004 hot meals this year to those in need. We had 250 actually accept Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. We gave out 219 Bibles to people. We baptized 29 people in water. Uh, we had 12 rededications. We gave out 34,573 items for health and beauty aid, 38,370 items for clothing, and we gave 309 haircuts to people that needed haircuts. Total food boxes, 8,322. So uh, we couldn't do this alone. We do it with our volunteers. By the way, we are all volunteer organization. No one has paid, not even me, and hasn't been from the very beginning. Um, if you look at the next one, this recognitions. Mayor Tad Townsell, when he was mayor, uh, actually wrote us a recommendation letter to the Arkansas Federal Surplus Property. That's in there as well. Uh, Jim Baker, I want to say that I'm sorry about his loss of his son, has also recommended us as a recommendation letter in there as well, and that's for our 16th birthday. Um, also, the Senator Jason Rayford has also uh, recommended us. I believe that was um, for the federal surplus as well. And then Mayor Tab Townsell, on several different occasions, our fifth anniversary and our 10th, he proclaimed Soul Food Cafe Mission Day in the city of Conway. There's some uh, testimonies in there. You can, I'm just going to read one. It says, uh, I'm a stay-at-home grandmother with four grandchildren that my husband and I raise. Uh, and they say that they just don't have enough money. We have to get extra food for the kids. And when school is out, it's hard to have enough food for growing children. The cost of living expenses does not leave a lot for groceries. Another one says, I'm disabled, not able to get SNAP to keep food in my house. Thank God for soul food. Another one said, this wouldn't have, uh, without you all, I would not have been able to feed my children. Another one says, my family fell on hard times due to the lack of work. Soul Food Cafe Mission helped us. So for Cafe Mission has been a vital uh, recovery and a walk with Jesus Christ. I'm going to skip the rest of those, but you can look at them if you want to. What, basically, what we found out is that uh, we're in a community in which we were donated uh, acreage by Gail and Margie Jones, which both passed. When we were there, it was basically a pasture. There was nothing that was built up next to us. We had intent to do what we're doing now even from the very get-go. And we even had Lynn Hicks, who was the building inspector back then, look at our property and he said, well, you would be grandfathered in because you're here. By the way, we were in the county then they annexed us in in 2008. And so we proceeded to build our building, get electrical, get plumbing and all of that. Here recently in the last year, uh, we were trying to really get into our building to, to do the things that we do, not necessarily overnight stay, and got a loan from Johnny Adams at First Security Bank for $160,000. We also had other people contribute to us, and a lot of 
different construction workers do pro bono work. So we were able to put a lot of that in and we're almost finished now. Uh, we heard that there was a development company coming in to develop the rest of the land and we felt like this would be a very good time for us to go ahead and get a rezone so that we could do uh, another goal of ours, which is to do the short-term stay. It's not a homeless shelter, short-term emergency stay, one to three days, as long as they could stay is uh, seven days. This is for people that in our community get burned out of their house. Um, they, I know a guy right now, I can't help him, but he's actually living in his car right now. We've got some people here that are probably from that as well, and they can give their testimony in their two minutes. I looked and I found that there's a lot of people that were contesting the fact that we are close to a school and to a daycare, and I, I'm concerned about that as well. Listen, I have seven children. I birthed one of them at home. We homeschooled our children. I have six grandchildren, which one was dedicated at Christ Church of Conway just this Sunday. I, I have feelings. I, I'm out there to minister to people. I'm not out there to you know, have people get hurt by what we're doing. I will tell you, it's a different atmosphere, and I want to recommend that you come. Even tomorrow, we'll be open from 9 until 3 and see what Soul Food Cafe actually does. But when I started looking, we looked at Bethlehem House. We looked at Haven House. We looked at um, Phoenix House. We looked at um, Last Chance Ministries and Coho, and we found out, and there's a schedule. You'll find it right here in the blue section, and it looks just like that. You'll find out that there are all those places have daycares, and all of them have schools in their proximity. Uh, some are just right next door. We were looking at Bethlehem House, which is a wonderful ministry in our community. And, and actually, it's right there smack dab in the neighborhood. And you can walk through their back fence on both sides of their building and walk in the neighborhood. So we went and stopped and talked to some of the neighbors about it and asked them, how do you feel about this? And they said, we're glad to have them in our community because they're helping people. I said, has there been any problems? They said, no, there hasn't been any problems. So I, I, I think that it's not the wrong location. First of all, we were there first, even before those houses built up next to our property. But also, we propose, and let me give you some safety things that we talked about. If you will turn to uh, the safety, I think it's the white section. Let's see here just for a second. No, it is the blue section still. If you'll turn to the next page, and if I can have somebody help me to pass these pictures out. I took a Google snapshot. Please, Ricky, quick. Pass these out. These are Haven House, Coho, Last Chance. Okay, give it to a bailiff or somebody. Not a bailiff, sorry, <laughs> sir. <laughs> but you'll see that where Bethlehem House is, there's actually the, the Methodist Church daycare right there. It isn't very far, and, and there's the junior high, and you say, well, that's not elementary. Yeah, but you've got 12-year-old girls going to the, to the junior high. Um, you, you look at Last Chance, and if you look at Coho, they're, they're close to St. Joseph Elementary School. Uh, Kapka is their next door neighbor, which is a bunch of infants there. Uh, so if you look at each one of these locations, and then you can see the location where we're at, because it's in the blue chapter as well where, where we're located, we have one wall there where there's uh, houses there that were built after we were there. And this is what we would do. First of all, if we had a short-term emergency stay, uh, applicants must fill out an admission form. Staff will conduct an interview. They'll be required to have one form of identification. They will perform a criminal record, national sex offender registry background. No violent offenders, no sex offenders will be allowed in the short-term emergency stay program. Staff will search the community database needed, network as needed. When a staff member uh, suspects uh, use of illegal substances, authorities will be contacted. When alcohol use is suspected, a breathalyzer test will be administered. All admissions are tentative until proven by the shelter director. Staff you have about 30 seconds left, just okay. as a reminder. There's a whole list there. There's 15 safety precautions that we're in putting in place to make sure that the community doesn't get hurt by what we're trying to do. We have an application in here, and we have an operating procedures manual that you'll see there. We also have a job description and suggested wages for the different roles that we will have and we'll be hiring people to do, and an applica application for those wanting to come into the short stay emergency shelter. Um, there's funding and also construction there, a grant source list. There's even a floor pattern in the very back of oh, this as Mr. well. Mr. Harvey, we're at time. And I'm done. Thank but you, I think we, the commission will probably have a few questions for you that will allow you to answer some of our questions, okay. that will allow you to answer some more topics. I appreciate your time. Thank you. Uh, sir, if you'll stay up there, sir, I imagine we'll have a sir, few questions for you now. <laughs> well, is there anybody else to speak for this? Do it to the, the, oh, yeah, to the other floor. My name's Bill Milburn. Uh, I'm retired from the Conway Police Department. It's been 27 years. I was a major over the criminal division at the time I retired. So in my entire career, I uh, covered the whole time that Soul Food has been in Conway. 
the last several years as part of the detective division, every report came across my desk. And I can tell you in, in the entire lifetime of soul food, I never saw a report of a problem that came across my desk. In addition, when they functioned uh, out of the ministry center, the old Second Baptist, uh, if there's a busy street in Conway, it's, it's Oak and Harkrider. Uh, we never had a problem uh, in dealing with them, their traffic flow, their parking. Uh, about a year ago, I became intimately involved with Soul Food when they needed another place to stay until they finished their building. And First Church of the Nazarene opened our doors and they've been functioning out of our building for about the last year. It's amazing to see their operation. They're a well-oiled, well-organized machine that's a, a friend to the community and, and the neighborhood, and we've had zero problems. When you walk in Monday afternoon, it's still set up like we have church. By Tuesday, it's a place to feed and clothe and, and give haircuts to folks and health and beauty supplies. And by Wednesday morning, it's ready for church again. It's amazing. I've never seen anything like it. And that's due in large part to the large numbers of, of unpaid volunteers that they have every week. Uh, I, could, I can't do anything but highly recommend them. Uh, like Rick said, they were in the middle of a farm field when they started building their dream. And the city has just kind of come out around them. So I would appreciate if you'd look favorable on their request. Thank you, sir. Anybody else to speak in favor of this request? Hi, I'm Holly Michael, and um, I'd like to speak on behalf of Soul Food. I joined the organization in March, and um, since then have worked in a number of capacities from passing out food to being a participant of Soul Food and even to um, telling people and working with survivors of abuse. And my experience with Soul Food has been seeing people get jobs and become stable. It's been seeing people whose lives have been transformed because they've experienced love that they may not have had in past times and it's really been an atmosphere where people have received connections that were missing in their life prior to experiencing soul food and so because of that what i'm seeing is i'm seeing them move into a higher level of functioning in the society and being a positive um, role model for them to um, just achieve new things in their lives. I also live in the neighborhood. I live in Deerfield, which is about a mile down the road. And um, I have two kids in Ellen Smith, so I understand the impact um, that people feel emotionally about the, um, uh, the ministry being so close. But I um, can tell you from personal experience, my uh, business background is with large corporations. I've run multi-million and even multi-billion dollar P&Ls. And this organization has run well. It's run very well. The ministry allows people to function at levels that are high, um, and they provide a level of accountability that I haven't seen sometimes in America's best corporations. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else to speak in favor of this? If you might, wouldn't mind, please state your name and your address, please. Yes, sir. My name is Jared Bridgman, and I live at 12 Forest Lane here in Conway. Um, I stood here in this exact spot um, almost two years ago at a city council meeting um, in reference to a conditional use permit for the ministry center um, in order to establish a short-term homeless shelter. And uh, at that time, that was denied, um, as we all know. Um, <laughs> but the city government promised me and everyone else at that meeting that that denial was not saying, we don't want this in our city. This location is not the right location. But there was a promise made to me and to the others there that we would work with these groups to make it work. We would find the right location. And so I'm here today to speak on behalf of Soul Food because I want to hold the city accountable for the promise that was made to me by our city government. I support this mission because I want to see our city be great. And I think what makes a city great is how we treat our citizens, and that's all of them, not just business owners or the wealthy or the advantaged. They're valuable also, but just because they have, they have, we shouldn't treat them any better than those who lack, namely the homeless. We should seek to care for the homeless and help them, as Soul Food does, become contributing members of society to help them get off their backs and onto their feet. And Soul Food has done that. They're a well-established, as Rick said, well-established, great reputation in our city. The numbers are mind-blowing. 
Now, I understand the safety concerns that people have. Um, I'm a father, I have three children. Um, but I think a lot of those concerns come from uh, misguided stereotypes of the homeless. Uh, if you look at numbers about crime rates in even large cities, the homeless aren't the ones committing the most crimes. And if you want to know more about the homeless, like Rick said, go volunteer. Like others have said, go volunteer with Coho, with Deliver Hope, with Bethlehem House, with Soul Food Cafe. Put a face to this name, homeless. See these people, who they are, made in the image of God. Your eyes will be open and you'll be better for it. Thank you, sir, for your time. Thank you. Anybody else to speak in favor of this? Just your name and address. My what? Your name and address. <coughs> My name is Anthony Stuffleby and I have no address. Okay. If you want to find me, I would probably be in the Walmart parking lot. Okay. I've lived there for 50 days and 50 nights. Um, the community here, it is a very hard place to try to survive. In 2016, I was diagnosed with avascular necrosis in my hips. It's a condition where your blood flow gets cut off your bone and your bone dies. I lost my job. I lost my home. I lost my family. The community here is a very difficult one to live in. It is not easy. It is get a job, work, make your way or perish. And when they say perish, they do not mean go away. They mean perish. It is a struggle. I struggle day to day from morning to night. I am currently employed now with Blackwoods downtown as a dishwasher. Starting Wednesday, I will be a cook with uh, Bob's Grill downtown. The kindness and the love that uh, is the only reason I'm here today. And it's far and few in between. He's only able to help on Tuesdays. He can't provide much more than that. And everybody that volunteers for him do it for nothing. There are other places that provide maybe a meal, sometimes a shower. You can't do laundry. When you're asked how you do it, your response is you beg for money. You have to panhandle. I don't want to do that. Nobody does. It's not something I choose to do. I stand for this man because he is doing something right. He's trying to help somebody a people that everybody else would just assume don't exist. They have been called the unseen. They have been called bums, losers. I have been called everything in the book. I have been spit upon. I have been cussed upon. I have done nothing wrong. Thank you. Thank you so Sir, much. How do you get back and forth? Uh, I have a little Chevy Aveo car <laughs> I purchased when I got some money. I licensed it and insured it. That is what I live in. Um, okay. Thank that, is that it? Yeah, thank okay. you. Thank you, sir. You're welcome. Uh, anybody else to speak in favor of this? City of Hope. How are you doing? Philip Fletcher, uh, 2652 Bruce Street here in Conway. And understanding uh, similar to uh, what Jared Bridgman mentioned, uh, to hold uh, the city government accountable uh, to what uh, was mentioned two years ago, that the role of government is to protect its citizens, all of its citizens, and that when a group of its citizens come together to help the least of these, uh, government should do its best to support that effort or uh, create avenues in which compassion can roll freely and nicely. And right now what we have here is, I believe, government that stands in the way. That government is standing in the way of compassion happening. Yes, I understand as a father, uh, some of the concerns that parents have that live uh, near the area. Yes, I understand as a person who works with the homeless, some of the concerns. Uh, but as Jared has said, and as Anthony has aptly said, that these are people. They're not criminals first, they're people. And there are people who have, yes, on some occasions have made bad decisions, and they've fallen on hard times. But there are other times, in most cases, where life has punched them in the face. 
And most times, none of us are prepared for when life punches us in the face, when we wake up and we have no place to stay. We have no place to go. And as it stands right now here in Conway, the city government has created a situation where it has made it extremely difficult for men like Rick and his wife, for people like us who want to serve the homeless, to make it difficult. And then it signals the fact that maybe we're not as compassionate as we think we are. That in a city that is predominated by the Christian faith, in Catholic and Protestant, that it is a hard thing to figure out how do we hear on Sundays about a homeless Jesus who ministered to the poor, but every day we choose to do otherwise. Thank you so it, much for your time, so, sir. Thank you. Our time, yeah. Thank you. Anybody else speak in favor of this? Go ahead. Hi, my name is uh, Rochelle Weston, and I'm a single mom of three. And so I fell on hard times like two years ago, um, clothing my kids, making ends meet. And so I was told to go to Soul Food Cafe Mission, and I received help. I'm working now. And um, so I'm like a positive product of uh, Soul Food Cafe Mission. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. My name is Rob Duhon. I live at 60 Fairmont Drive here in Conway. And I just wanted to share a, a very brief point of view. Um, about five, four or five years ago, my wife and I, due to physical disability, we're no longer able to make ends meet, and I started going to Soul Food Cafe Mission just because I needed to to get help. Now, I go other places, too. Um, I would go to sold-out church, places like that, Kapka. But Soul Food was the one that did the most to help us because it's every week, and they're, to be honest, they're not stingy with the food. Um, last year, uh, God has blessed me to be a local minister now. My wife and I are on our feet. We don't need the help. But I believe it was January, I started volunteering every week at Soul Food, my wife and I both, because you would not believe the amount of good this institution does. And I saw it both as a client and then as a volunteer. And I just want you to understand that every week when I'm volunteering, the amount of people that come up to me and say, I appreciate what y'all are doing, would you pray with me? It is mind blowing to see when, when you hug a homeless person that came in to get a shower, not even the homeless, but people who are having bad times. They may have a house, but there's no food in it. And so as a local minister, I, I will tell you right now, if God was looking down on us trying to make a decision on this, I guarantee you Soul Food is one of his organizations and we should support it. Thank you. Anyone else? Um, my name is Cheryl Pickens, and I live at 21627 Jeff Road in Hensley, Arkansas. But in 2005, my family went through Hurricane Katrina, and we lost everything. We lost our house. We lost our cars. We lost everything we owned. And um, Soul Food Cafe Mission fed my family for many months. They gave us soap and shampoo and, and anything that we needed, so I was really thankful for that. My husband's a minister, and I'm a teacher, so we're doing great. But during that time, we really needed Sofu Cafe Mission, and they were there for us. Thank you. Hi, I'm Elizabeth West, um, 745 East Robbins, Lot 42. Um, two and a half years ago, I moved to Conway from Northwest Arkansas. Um, I had just gotten clean um, from being a drug addict and an alcoholic. And um, I made a decision to get my life clean. And Soul Food Cafe was a great beginning for me to start serving and get plugged in to a new lifestyle. Um, through Soul Food Cafe, I had to restart a whole new life here in Conway. And they helped me just rebuild and learn what it meant to bring value into my life, moral standing into my life. Um, they have helped me in how to raise my children and offer guidance and substantial um, 
views for my sons and how to raise them. Um, I now volunteer through Soul Food Cafe, and I don't know how my week would go if I did not have that part of me and being able to give back to the community that helped me build me up. Um, I'm a proud, proud volunteer at Soul Food Cafe, and I know that this mission has helped so many people, and it's my privilege to serve such an amazing mission. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for your time. My name is Brian Parsons. I live at 2810 Westport Circle. Uh, I wasn't a fan of soul food myself. So for the people here who are not fans of it, uh, I was in that camp. There's no question about it. My wife works four days out there with a bunch of men who come from who knows where and have done who knows what. So I wouldn't put my wife in jeopardy over anything. I mean, anything. The mission's not worth it for me and my wife. But when she comes home and she explains to me what she's done and what she's seen and the impact that she feels like she's had and that she has some fulfillment, then I can't help but support that. So I hope that just like a couple of other people have said, before you pass judgment, and I'm just as bad as anybody else, but how many of us have actually put our hands in the dirty work Instead of being able to say, oh, no, I, I don't want to do that, or I don't think that should go that way, put your hands in it. Hug somebody. Talk to somebody. You don't want to do that. Nobody wants to do that. Nobody wants to do the dirty work. Somebody wants to write a check, but nobody wants to do the work. So I'm just asking, before we do anything else, go. See it for yourself. Go and see it for yourself. See if it's worth it, and if you don't like it and it's dangerous, then yes, come back up here and tell everybody just how bad it is, but at least give it that chance. Thank you. Thank you. I want to thank you all for having us here. My name is Tracy Harvey. I live the same address as he does. <laughs> 168 Sunshine Farms. Um, I just want to share with y'all a text I got today. Uh, I, uh, I work with the homeless directly. I go find them in the woods. I go find them under the bridges. When I first started back in January of doing actually going out with, and finding them, my husband said, you're going to get hurt. I said, Rick Harvey, I'm not going to get hurt. I said, why would somebody hurt me if I'm trying to help them? My kids, Mama, I'm worried about you. I said, Mama's going to be fine. My mother, 86 years old, lives out off the Sturgis Road. Tracy Lynn, you do not need to be doing this. I said, Mother, when God says do something, I have to do it. And he told me to do it Monday back before Christmas of 2016, just this past. Because we've run the mission for 16 years, up until that point, 15 and God told me, I was laying there praying that morning. I said, Lord, what else do you have for me? What else do you want me to do? You know I'll do it. We started the mission because you told us to. What else do you want? He said, it's time to go get the homeless. I said, well, Lord, I thought they'd come to the mission. He said, Tracy, you know good and well. And I don't know if you talk to God like this, but I do. <laughs> and we had these conversations. And he said, they, some of them come, but they can't all get there. He said, it's time to go get them. I said, okay, how do you propose I do this? He said, I'm going to show you. I said, Lord, I don't even know where they are. He said, I'm going to show you. I said, okay. Well, he, he gave me the idea of calling someone that's in a position to know where they were. I won't tell you who that is because I ain't getting him in trouble. But he said, there's this encampment, there's this encampment, there's this encampment. I started hunting them down. And as I told the people at a courtesy meeting we had Tuesday night to answer questions and to put misconceptions to rest, and they laugh, so I'll just tell it to y'all, so maybe it's a good comedian point. You know, I go out there, and I'm not scared because I have the Holy Spirit as my guide, and I have my 38 tucked in the back of my pants, <laughs> and they all know it. And I'm telling you right now, if uh, you're helping them, they ain't going to hurt you. Miss Harvey, I hate to cut you off, but we are at time. Okay. Can I read this text real quick? It's from a homeless girl that texted me today. 
Real quick. Mr. Come on, Chairman. Give me a break. Well, the second. Thank you. <laughs> she said, um, Tracy, she said, hey, Tracy, it's Brittany. She's homeless. I know her. I lived under the bridge with Carolyn. I finally got my own place, and I'm supposed to move in tomorrow. Sorry, y'all. It makes me happy. I was wondering if you could help me find furniture and things because I have literally nothing, and I can vouch she has nothing. I said, okay, let me check with Rick and see what we might have. Where are you staying? She said, okay, I appreciate it so much. I'm not with my boyfriend anymore, but I am pregnant. I said, oh, crud. Anyway, I got a trailer at Oakwood Village on Robin Street, and I don't know if you know the nickname of Oakwood Village, but it's Chateau Ghetto. Mm -hmm. I said, okay. I said, do you want to come to the mission tomorrow? She said, thank you. I can't believe life is finally getting better. She said, I work 7 a.m. to 3 p.m. at McDonald's, or I definitely would come tomorrow. I said, great. I said, happy you're working. We can still get you a food box. Give me directions to your place. I said, uh, she said, me too, and the people there, most of them, LOL, are amazing and very helpful. She said, I don't, this is what I want you to hear, I don't have electricity yet. I have to wait till the 20th of next month, September 20th, next month, so I can pay rent and everything else. So she's got a place to stay, but she's got to pay rent, but she can't have her electricity turned on. Any of y'all been ever been there? You ever done that? Yeah, I hadn't either. I've been a blessed woman. I Thank said, I know where Oakwood is, which trailer, she told me. I said, she said, but I won't be there for two more days. I'm staying with a coworker till Wednesday. I said, okay. She said, thank you. I said, my pleasure, Chick-fil-A. So thank anyway, you, I just want you to know, we love these people. Thank you so much. And Rick, I didn't mean for you to have to stand up the whole time. You really can sit down, <laughs> I promise. He, he's doing a good, oh man, I don't want to read that. Okay. <laughs> Hello, uh, my name's Dustin Gladwell. I live at 2295 Apple Blossom. I see their bright yellow building like right outside my window. Uh, my girlfriend, she volunteers with the van. Uh, it's not her shirt, but it is kind of small and I apologize for that. Um, they're a similar organization. Uh, they don't uh, actually provide shelter. Uh, they just go out to the encampments and uh, I wanna echo the her statement that they go out and give them food and they don't feel threatened. You know, as long as you're not like, you know, they're trying to get them, you know, arrested or anything like that. But, you know, there, there's nothing they can do wrong just just being homeless there's that's nothing wrong with that uh, but i believe that if the soul food cafe was able to give you know people that are on hard times like a day or two to get back on their feet or just you know somewhere to think where there's nothing going you know crazy happening that they just need somewhere peaceful to to just collect their bearings and and just eat you know everybody everybody likes to eat i'm sorry i had hamburger over here it's probably on a shirt don't fit but um no, my, my girlfriend, she's 135 pounds, and she's not intimidated by these people. And they're just like you and me. I mean, they are human beings, Americans. They just fall on some hard times, maybe, you know, like a week or two bad things that happened to them, or they didn't have savings or something that happened. Uh, they, just, they just need a place to get on their feet. And uh, if y'all approve Soul Food Cafe, I would be glad to be their neighbor. So thank y'all. Thank you. All right, guys, um, I want to get to the other side of this subject. So if you have something, if there's any more to speak in favor of this, I'll hear them. But I want to make sure that we're not restating the same thing. Over. Uh, my name is Tim Britton. I'm at 1505 Gardenia in Conway, Arkansas. I also pastor Conway First Church of the Nazarene, so I feel like I might be able to speak in this in a way that some can't. I was trying to avoid speaking and wasn't planning to, so this might not be the most eloquent thing I've ever said. Um, I've moved to Conway about four years ago, and about three years ago I had my first opportunity to speak at Soul Food Cafe Mission. Uh, during the first year that I lived in Conway, I was amazed at how progressive and clean and beautiful our city was. The first time I walked into Conway, or uh, into Soul Food, I wondered who are these people and where have they come from? Because you see a demographic of the population uh, together that you never see together in Conway. Um, you see the, what I would call the least, the last, and the lost assembled in one place. Uh, we've become frustrated over the last months because we see them individually on our street corners panhandling, and, and that might be annoying when you see that individually. When you see them together, it, it's, uh, it's heartbreaking and moving. And um, about a year, a little over a year ago, the opportunity opened for us to partner with Soul Food, 
and uh, we began the conversation. And part of that conversation for me was calling my insurance agent and saying, hey, we'd like to allow Soul Food to use our facilities on Tuesdays, and I wanted to see what we need to do with you. And he said, uh, he said, I can't stop you from doing that, but I would advise you not to. He said, I would advise you not to because it is a liability. And it's a liability because of the what ifs, the what could happen. Uh, I can tell you that in the last 14 months or so, uh, none of the what ifs have happened. In fact, I think sometimes we worry about the liability of a situation and the what ifs. Uh, and I live in Southwind. I, I'm in walking distance from the mission myself. We worry about the liability and we forget about the responsibility of the people that we need to, to, to serve and watch out for and defend and provide for in our community. If soul food were to vanish, uh, those resources would go away. Uh, those families that are served by soul food would have nowhere to go and nowhere to turn. Soul food has been an incredible ministry partner for us. They have uh, exhibited an incredible amount of uh, organization, of responsibility and stewardship. We can worry about the liability of what could happen. Rick, how long did you say it's been? Is it 26 years of ministry? Well, it's been 16 for soul food. 16 years for soul food. Sir, we're the, li we're the liability hasn't happened. And we're at time. Thank you so much. Thank you. Anybody else to speak in favor of this or something different to add? All right. I hear the opposition. First person to speak against will get 10 minutes. Every, every subsequent speaker will get two. Good evening. <clears throat> My name's Landon Sanders, and I live at 2355 Springcrest here in Conway. And I'm here on behalf of the Spring Valley subdivision that is adjacent to the property in question here today. Uh, I actually lived in Spring Valley for 11 years and recently moved out, and my mother's about to move into that neighborhood, and it's a great neighborhood. Um, I would like to preface my statement today uh, with that the residents of Spring Valley that I've spoke with are not against the rehabilitation of homeless individuals back into society. Uh, in fact, they believe it's a very admirable thing that Pastor uh, Harvey and his wife are undertaking. We just believe that there is a more appropriate location than uh, an area that is a residential R1 zoned area uh, that contains elementary school and a daycare. And, uh, but before I get into the conditional uh, use issue, I will uh, touch on the, the, uh, the rezoning to R2A issue. And with that, uh, you know, uh, the, the residents of Spring Valley aren't, aren't for that either because when you look at the scheme of the neighborhood, this is a, uh, this is a, a R1 dominated area. And if you, uh, if, if you rezone this to R2A, this could open the door to, you know, duplexes being built in the future. That's not, uh, it doesn't sound like that's in the immediate plan right now, but it's a possibility. And if that happens, you're looking at, you know, a, as the report said that the commission put out, 200 ve uh, vehicle trips per day added into that little area. And there is only uh, two entrances, one in Spring Valley and one off of Donaghy into that area. That could potentially uh, cause traffic issues and be a fire hazard. But uh, besides that, the, the major issue here is the conditional use permit. The uh, members of Spring Valley that I spoke with are fervently against the overnight stay. And that, that's the, the main issue here. And they have several uh, points that they like to make here. First is what happens uh, when a homeless individual shows up to Soul Food Mission Cafe to stay the night and have a place to stay, and it's full. Where is that homeless individual going to go? Uh, and it, it may be unfair to uh, play into the stereotypes of homeless individuals, and, and it is unfair, but they're going to have to go somewhere. And uh, it's, it's conceivable that they'll go into Spring Valley subdivision. And, uh, you know, like the gentleman here was saying earlier, it, it is about the what ifs, and that's what scares the residents of Spring Valley. You know, this is a, an area that has a lot of children. And while a lot of people might not be scared of these individuals, uh, a child walking to school or walking home from school might be scared of that person that might be uh, on the bike trail there or near their playground. So that, that is a, a serious issue uh, that, that the residents of Spring Valley have uh, posed to me. 
is the loitering issue. The second issue here is the proximity to the school, and that kind of relates to the first one. You know, uh, th this is within a thousand feet of an elementary school, and it's closer to the daycare. And if there are homeless individuals walking through this area, you know, it could scare mm -hmm. these, these kids. Uh, they might not be dangerous, but they could be. And you know, uh, th there, uh, th this could uh, lead to the third issue here, and it, it's uh, it, homeless shelters have a reputation, and it's unfair, but it, there, it's been in the news a lot recently uh, to be a conduit for crime. And uh, I know that's unfair to say, but there's been two articles uh, in Little Rock within the past week, one with t uh, today's THB and the other with the Arkansas Democrat Gazette. Uh, and the Little Rock chief of police came out and said, at one of these homeless shelters, they've had to uh, uh, put up cameras to watch 24-7 uh, out there to make sure nothing's going on. And at another location, they've had to uh, respond to numerous calls of fighting, drug dealing, and other uh, unappealing crimes. And uh, we believe that's a serious issue here. And, you know, being this proximity to the school, we don't want drugs near our kids. And, you know, the deal here is, you know, there's a reason that the Arkansas Code uh, prescribes an enhanced sentencing for drug crimes that are committed within a thousand feet of a school. And, you know, uh, it might not happen, and it's unfair to say that all, uh, that, that this is gonna happen, but it, it is a possibility, and that's what scares the residents of Spring Valley, that this is a possibility. And I actually have a study from the American Psychological Association, and it was a study uh, uh, conducted by a NYU grad student in New York, and he found that actually crime is worse among, uh, violent crimes are committed more often by homeless individuals that go from shelter to shelter than homeless individuals that are living on the streets. And that was just one study, and I have the copy of that if the commission would like to see that. But that, th these what ifs, th this is what is concerning the residents of Spring Valley here, and we just don't want to take that chance. There, there's a, a more appropriate place uh, than a, a residential area to place this uh, homeless shelter. And then finally, this is kind of the, the, the least important issue to us. The biggest issue is the safety of our families and, and children. But uh, the fourth issue is this could affect property values. I don't have a, a, a scientific study uh, that, that says anything about this, but I do have a uh, article from realtor.com that says that property values could be dragged down uh, up to 12.7% from a homeless shelter being adjacent to that residential area. And that's a substantial amount of, uh, a su substantial value to the homeowners in Spring Valley. And so finally, uh, before I, uh, yield to my fellow community members here. Mm -hmm. We actually have 225 signatures on a petition. If the commission would like to see that, I can pass that around to you guys, as well as the articles that I've cited today. And uh, we're gonna ask for your unanimous vote uh, to deny the zoning ordinance change here and the conditional use permit to provide a homeless shelter for overnight stay. And with that, uh, I'll yield to my fellow community members in Spring Valley and surrounding neighborhoods. Thank you, sir. Um, sir, sir, before you start. Yes. One of the things I'd like to say in the opposition, we did receive some 60 plus emails from you guys, and we did read all those um, as they came in um, throughout the week and throughout the other week. So. Um, I don't want you to feel like you have to get up and restate what you said in your email. If you have something pertinent to add in addition to that, we're happy to hear you, but I just want you to know we did get all those emails. Sorry, sir. My name is Roger Dobbins. I live at 2670 Zodja Lane, and we moved here uh, about full time uh, in May of this year. Um, the thing that I want to address is something that has not been brought up, and that is that uh, the city of Conway <coughs> does have a comprehensive plan it was stated in the documents that were prepared for the minutes of this meeting. And the comprehensive plan does indicate that that entire area 
the uh, appropriate development is single family development. It is not a homeless shelter. It is not duplexes. Your own documents state that it is supposed to be single family development. And the reason I bring that up is because I have several years experience on the planning commission of the city of Searcy and was chairman of that committee for several years. I know that, that your job is a difficult job, but your job is also to try to fulfill the goals set by the planning part of the city of Conway. Thank you. Thank you, sir. <coughs> Thomas Vincent, 904 Front Street. Uh, I represent Kids University, the daycare, um, which if you, I'm sure you're familiar with the area, but uh, it's my understanding that this daycare is about 885 feet from the uh, proposed side of this new homeless shelter. Um, and obviously this is a charged and emotional subject here today, but you know, the only issue here really is, is whether the rezoning is appropriate. Um, we've just heard from over 200 people who are gonna be neighbors over there to that place that, uh, that, that they're opposed to it. Um, and I'd just like to run over a few facts. You know, I think uh, everyone here um, I'd be willing to bet if you drove here, you probably locked your car before you came in here today. Um, everyone here is worried about safety. Everyone's worried about security. Um, and there are studies, uh, they're all over the internet. I brought some, if you're interested, you've probably seen them. Substance abuse, drug and alcohol abuse is prevalent among the homeless community. And uh, crime rates are exponentially higher among the homeless. Um, I believe they did mention that they're gonna make some efforts to check these folks in and organize them. But um, frankly, there's, there's no evidence that they've got the capacity to uh, undertake any type of real criminal background check. Uh, there's all kinds of laws everybody knows about certain types of people that can't be within a thousand feet of a elementary school or a daycare, sex offenders among others. Um, I'm not sure there's been any evidence today that, uh, that shows that we can prevent that from happening with this new homeless shelter. So for those reasons, um, and the fact that, you know, um, everyone here has talked about protecting each other and um, protecting children, but uh, Kids University can't carry a 38 in their back pocket. So, um, Thank you, you know, sir, we're at time. Please excuse me, I'm very nervous speaking in front of people. My name is Stephanie Johnson. I live at 2440 Apple Blossom Lane. I drive a school bus for school, Conway Public Schools. I work as a GIS technician for the Arkansas Military Department. I brought with me tonight a map that I made of our neighborhood, Spring Valley, and the surrounding area. My, there's a lot of concerns that have already been said, um, but another concern that I would like to add along with this is the wooded areas that surround both my neighborhood and uh, the property of Soul Foods Cafe. There's over 40 acres across the street from where I live, and there's over 80 acres behind their property. And my concern is how do we mitigate people from camping in those areas? Um, because there are several children. My daughter is seven. She has two friends on our street that are seven. I know there's another eight-year-old student that lives on my street, and a lot of these students walk to school. If we have people that are spending, that are living in these woods, and these children are walking to school by themselves in the morning, um, how do we keep them safe? Um, and so, and then I would like to add that before I moved to Conway seven years ago, I myself was homeless. So I know how hard it is, and I own my home now. And so I have made a full 
uh, come full circle from being homeless. But I also believe that a one to three night stay shelter is not the way to help people. I stayed in transitional housing, which was long term in a program that had lot rules for getting a job, saving money, and doing things that you needed to do to transition back to being not homeless. Um, Thank you, ma'am. We're at time. Thank, Thank, you. You. Thank you. Can I leave this with you guys? Or can I leave this with you guys? Sure. Thank you. We'll get it back to you. My name's uh, Chris Sullivan. I live at 2650 Poppy Cove, Conway, Arkansas. Um, I feel like I've been here several times. I was the original president of the association, property association, when it first started. I was one of the probably first 10 houses that was in that subdivision. My point is that we have, uh, I've been here to fight for the subdivision several times. They were gonna put apartment duplexes in front of the fence at one time. Um, we fought several things to allow the property owners to have what they were bought and paid for. We put the walking track in because of the value it gave the, the subdivision. So I just want to, you know, the, the planning commission sort of already set the standard, but now, but now, but now, but, but not allowing those duplexes to be built because of the daycare. We approved the daycare because we thought it brought value to the properties. And I just want to point out, not only that, but there, the church used to, there's a church that's in front that wanted to do something sort of similar to this at one time. And that was defeated also. And so I sympathize with Soul Food Cafe. I used to feed homeless for 10 years. And, and so I just want to bring the point that the association has fought this several times, especially with the property that was out front. Thank There's you, 323 sir. residents, which is one of the largest. Thank you, sir. We're at time. Hello. Uh, my name is Lee Early. Um, I live at 115 Nicole Circle. Um, here in Conway, which is in Woodland Springs, which is adjacent to Donaghy, uh, headed out toward uh, this their proposed site. Um, I work here in Conway uh, as a certified residential appraiser. Um, I've heard a lot of information about uh, some gentlemen threw some numbers together. Uh, I don't have exact numbers, uh, but I can tell you that I've, I've done probably a lot of appraisals for some of the people that you know are sitting right here. Um, their, their concerns are validated. Um, property values can be affected by what they're proposing. Um, it's, I actually went to the meeting the other day. I heard, uh, Jamie Stratton, uh, stand up and, and say that, you know, she looked at her, you know, over her fence and seen the tents or tents set up on their property. Um, so you can imagine that if you're trying to sell your house and somebody steps out in the backyard of that house. Uh, and they see tents, it's probably not going to be a good sale. Uh, and, and that is going to affect their values. Um, so the thing that, the other thing I, I guess I want to talk about is the thoroughfare uh, down Donaghy. You know, there's no sidewalks down parts of that. Some of the needs of, of the people that are, that are trying to service, uh, I mean, are traveling by foot. So if they're walking up and down, they're not walking on sidewalks. They're walking, you know, in the road or on the side of the road. Uh, it is the major safety concern. Um, the, the R2A uh, issue is 
uh, to me and in my experience as an appraiser for in this in this area um, is usually things are starting to, to lean downward uh, a, a, an area is trending uh, down uh, in value uh, which makes these areas people they can turn houses into duplexes they can build duplexes whatever Thank this you, area sir. is not that this area is is more of an r1 area uh, which you've got a gentleman here you know to propose that tonight thank so, you sir we're at time okay thank you Uh, good evening. My name is uh, Daniel Eubanks, and I live on 1745 Jasmine in the Spring Valley neighborhood. Uh, I'd like to say, start off with, you know, I've um, been an emergency room nurse for almost a decade, and so I understand the medical needs of the homeless. I've been there for several years. I under, I've seen the failure <coughs> of our society for the homeless people, and I want to pray, uh, commend you guys for the great work that you guys do. But y'all talked about all the what y'all do, and y'all have always delivered supplies to the homeless. Now you're bringing them to our area, and that's our concern. Um, you talk about it's a three to maybe seven day stay, but you had a gentleman here today who's been in his car for 50 days. So when he hits that seventh day, do y'all make him leave, or do y'all grant another stay? Um, there's no way you can make everybody present an ID. I send lots of homeless people. I try to refer lots of homeless people to um, shelters. Most of those guys and, and females don't have IDs, so they get turned away. Um, you can't, at two in the morning, what happens when someone walks down Donaghy and knocks on y'all's front door? Are y'all gonna have someone there 24 seven? Y'all gonna open the doors? Most places close because at that time of the day or the, when the more dangerous people come out. It just, that's just the facts of life. I've been there, I've seen it. I've, I've seen people, not everybody is mentally sound that comes to these facilities. You've got schizophrenia, bipolar, mania, um, anxiety, and then you have the drug problems and alcohol problems. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about true mental conditions that are not treated because they don't have access to those resources. But it only takes one person, one person um, to commit those horrendous crimes to hurt somebody, whether eventually maybe you guys or maybe our children and maybe our cars are being broken into, those are our concerns. It only takes one person. And there is, Thank there's you, always sir. a what if. So. Thank you, sir. Hi, my name's Jamie Stratton. I live at 2335 Dahlia. And I just wanted to kind of bring some photos and, and to really see, get a see of our area. Right here is a photo, and all this is residential, this whole area. And this is the property that Kevin Watson's wanting to develop. All this, there is not another business in our area besides the daycare that fits in. Um, from, you know, all the way to Dave Ward. Dave Ward's the closest business there is. Um, I also wanted to point out where their location is versus our school daycare so y'all could get a better picture of it. Also on this photo, um, their land backs up to my land and this Violet Street, you know, really should be, you know, a development back there. There should be another subdivision, but this is owned by Soul Food. And you can come, you know, right into our subdivision and you can walk through right there and get right into the subdivision. There's no fencing, no nothing around, in which I'm surprised that the city of Conway hasn't made them do some kind of something around their, their area. I'm a real estate agent, and so I see, usually when someone comes in wanting to do something, oh, you've got to do this, 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 and this to your building. And they don't have anything around. But then they do have a, a fence gate at the front of their property where it's fenced off, the road that comes to their property which is right here. But they'll fence that off, but you can see how easy access it is through our subdivision. So I don't understand why they're gating off the front end and leaving all that 
open. And that's a big main concern, you know, is, and they've had, you know, like I said, there was someone living in a tent there for two weeks. And it, they did belong there because they had crates that they put down to walk straight, you know, so they wouldn't get in the mud and stuff right up to the building and they would go there during the day. So they were sleeping in the tent and then working at the soul food during the day. Thank you so much, ma'am. We're at time. Okay. My name is Jackson Terrell, and I live at 2535 Apple Blossom, right in the subdivision that they are wishing to put this temporary stay shelter. And as a 14-year-old, I went to Ellen Smith for five years of my education, walked home for many of them. It's about, oh, a quarter of a mile, and I see kids, young kids, walking home from Ellen Smith, and the thought that one of them could get hurt breaks my heart. It's awful to think <coughs> that just one of these amazing people could turn out not to be amazing, could hurt one of these innocent young children. These are children. There's a daycare. I mean, it's just, it's horrible to think that we could be putting our children in danger and like I said, I'm a 14 year old. I go, I attend the junior high and I walk home with my little brother. And I don't think that it's fair that a few should have, that our children should be put in danger because one or two homeless people that walk into Soul Food Cafe turn out not to be who they seem. So I'm here to speak for the people that don't have a voice, for the kids that won't be here to speak. Why should we put them in danger? It just doesn't make sense. Thank you. Thank you. I'm Roger Anderson, 1635 Ivy Cove, and the young, now you got the old. <laughs> uh, uh, I don't think anybody in Spring Valley denies there is a need for caring for those who are much less fortunate than we are. And I don't believe the opposition in Spring Valley is geared to that issue. Uh, somebody alluded to the fact that we should uh, get our hands dirty before we condemn or take apart, I've had my hands dirty. Prior to moving to Conway, I was a part of the group at the stew pot in downtown Little Rock, serving meals and clothing. I've seen the good, I've seen the bad, few cases the downright ugly, but it's there and it needs to be addressed. My concern, and I think most of my neighbors' concern, is the location. I don't have the option of looking at a map. Uh, I was, uh, by the way, very much impressed with your numbers on the meals you serve, the clothing that you hand out. When I look <coughs> back at Stu Pot, you're doing a heck of a job. Uh, but I would like to remind everybody that with those numbers goes an individual. That individual has to get to and from that service. And if you look at a you know, map, I'm not up to date on all the access points, but the only way into that property today is a graveled lane. The other access points would be through to streets in the Spring Valley subdevelopment, <coughs> sub in development, and those streets are the only means the children in that development have to move from neighbor to neighbor and to school. Thank you, sir. We're at time. Uh, and I just have, have my concern over the traffic and the access. Sure. Thank you so much. My name is Melissa Britt. I live at 1520 Gardenia in um, 
the Southwind subdivision. Um, I and over 250 <coughs> of my neighbors um, would like to oppose the, um, the homeless shelter going in at that location. Um, I myself have also got my hands dirty. We understand that there is a need and we're compassionate to those people. However, um, an example that I can provide is there is already foot traffic going through our neighborhood to the location. Um, in the last week alone, I have witnessed um, one gentleman uh, walking down the street muttering to himself. Another gentleman was um, obviously intoxicated, um, walking back and forth, uh, swerving. And the third gentleman urinated in one of our neighbor's yards in front of children who were playing in their front yards. As a mother, that makes me very concerned. Um, besides, um, we think that there are more appropriate locations, um, not only for the safety of our children, but also for the people who are needing services from the mission. And we hope that a uh, compromise could be found. Um, I would like to submit the petition. Thank you so much. My name is Stephen Sickmiller. I live at 2250 Morning Glory. And I don't want to reiterate everything that everybody said, but I would like to point out a simple fact. On their website, they said their land was donated in 2007 before any development happened around them. My home was built in 2003. So while they're, they're, that's their key point that they were grandfathered in, our subdivision was there before they were even donated the land. And that's all I want to say. Thank you. Thank you. Hold on, honey, hold on. I'm Stephen Hyatt. This is my wife, Jennifer Hyatt. We live at 1675 Churchill, and I'm just here to say I love y'all. I'm not here to hate on y'all or anything like that, but I got to live with her. <laughs> so whatever she's about to say, y'all have some compassion on me. No, oh, man. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh, 1675 Churchill, he's right. And I also property manage for um, a couple of people, and they have um, nine houses in the direct vicinity. I will say their addresses just, just because. 2131 Morning Glory, 1645 Churchill, 2101 uh, Morning Glory. 1655 South Donaghy, 1655 Churchill, 2119 Morning Glory, 2125 Morning Glory, 1665 Donaghy, and 1665 Churchill. So this is the direct little area right in front of um, the barn, we like to call, past the landscape place, right here, this little horseshoe right in front of Spring Valley. Mm -hmm. um, I think everybody has said some great things. I just want to be real brief. Open all hours. Where will they go? Um, why do they have to have a drug? policy and testing and all of this because it happens it's reality um we don't i don't want to have to have a gun in the yard or just you know i know that she said she has to take guns when she goes but and i you know we are christians and we firmly believe in helping everyone and so this is such a catch-22 is all i know how to say because we want and this has opened my eyes to what more I need to do in the community. But unfortunately, I just don't want this in my backyard. I have a five-year-old, um, a three-year-old, and 18-month-old twins. And I'm already nervous when he lets them out in the front yard. And I'm like, where are they? What are they doing? I just don't want to be afraid of my own backyard. And I, I have to say this. Um, I know that this is their dream. but um, And this is so bad to say because we are Christians. and. Um, but we do have to worry about property value. Um, this ho little house of ours, it's 1,600 square feet. Um, this is our dream. And we need the equity out of this house to be able to move on because I have four children in a 1,600 square foot house. And so um, this is our dream. And I just, 
I just keep hearing the verse, there's wisdom in a multitude of counsel. And so I just pray that you guys would listen to all of us and know that we are not Thank trying to so take much. this dream away from you. We just, we want to help you do it somewhere else. We really do. We really do. Thank you so much. Eighty Paget Road, and uh, we currently have the property that surrounds uh, this mission uh, under contract. And uh, we propose to put an R1 subdivision in there. I think it's next on the agenda after this. And um, somehow it, it, it is <clears throat> seemed early on that Soul Food Mission Cafe was under uh, attack. It's not. As a matter of fact, I'm, I kind of like to donate to it. I mean, I'm, I'm in favor of Soul Food Mission Cafe. I'm here to speak for them. But for the rezoning request and the land use, I find it totally the wrong spot as far as within the community with all these people who've invested in the residential investments and what we're trying to do around it. It just doesn't appear to be the right spot. It's like a square peg in a round hole. It just doesn't fit. And I commend them for what they've done. Um, but I, I find that uh, well, you've heard the voices, you've heard the concerns, I think they're valid. I think Soul Food Mission Cafe has fantastic program going on. I think they're to be honored for that. But to put in an overnight stay, a homeless shelter, you can call it anything you want, call it express or whatever, it's a homeless shelter in the middle of a neighborhood is not appropriate land use. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Good afternoon. Um, my name is David Hogue. I'm an attorney. I won't say who I represent. Um, I'm not here as representing any particular person. Uh, I'm here because I got a few phone calls from people in the audience that were explaining that, that uh, it seems like there's a lot of people here who fully and wholeheartedly support Soul Food Cafe and their mission as long as they do it somewhere other than where they stand or where they sit as long as they do it somewhere other than where it might affect their personal property, their income, their assets, and so forth. Anywhere, any anywhere but where I am. Anywhere but where my children are. Um, that's not how homeless help works. Uh, there are people at the, at the Soul Food Mission who are, I dare say, just as concerned about the people that live in the neighborhood as anybody else. There are people that are trying to help the, the homeless people that will come through here. They're just, concern, just as concerned about their own children. But, but I dare say that sometimes people who work in homeless shelters, they bring their children to work. And they bring their children to work because the people that are in the homeless shelters aren't necessarily the thugs that you think they are. And there are people in well-to-do <coughs> $100,000 house neighborhoods that are just as thug level as anybody in a homeless shelter. And so, and so I would urge you to think about the fact that, that a crystal meth user can be in a $200,000 house and live there just as well as in a homeless shelter. Sir. And, a, and, a, and a, if I may. No, a, uh, we, no, excuse Excuse us, guys. Excuse us. Yes, sir. This is the section where we're asking those opposed, and I'm not getting that by your statement. Okay, are you and, coming back and to we are, in favor? We are at time, so I'm going to ask us to go ahead and move on. Okay, uh, can I say one sentence? No, sir, thank I'm, you so I'm much. I'm going to say one sentence. You need sir. to know about, you need to know about a federal law called Religious sir. Land Use and Institutionalized Persons Act. <laughs> sir, thank you so much. It may invalidate everything thank you. you're doing. Thank you so much, thank you. sir. You need to know that. <coughs> Do you Point of order. Thank you. Once again, I was going to let him finish, but we are in the uh, session that to speak against. So if you're not going to speak against, uh, I can't hear you. You're here to speak against? Yes. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening. My name is Pamela Maltbia. 
and I do reside in the Spring Valley subdivision. And what I do support helping the least of us and helping them to attain the dream that we all have of living a better life, I came here just for that. I was born and raised in Chicago. And a lot of things that you've seen on TV, that's where I saw them also. That's why I left them there, <laughs> to bring my kids to a safer place, to bring them to a community where I could let them go outside and enjoy the neighborhood that I pay dearly to live in. My niece just visited me from Chicago, and her big dream, what did she burn us up doing every day, was to ride a bike, because she can't do that where she lives. My brother is a Chicago police officer, so he is mandated to live in the city limits with the things that we see on TV. But I was very happy to allow her to ride our subdivision until her legs wobbled, and she had to come in the house. I felt safe doing that. With that particular entity in our community, I would not feel safe with her doing that and I would make her stay in the house. Nor would I feel comfortable with that entity being right up the street from my child's school or my child's daycare. While I do respect and hope that they live a better life I do say that I do not want that in my backyard. And I ask you to please be proactive and not reactive because once you open the door, you can't close it. All you can do is apologize for the bad things that happen. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else to speak against? I live at 1650 Ivy Cove, and we've been there. Your I name, would say please. Your name, Pam please. Arnold. Thank you. Um, we've been there about 11 years, and most of that time, my husband has worked offshore on an oil rig out of the country, which has always been a concern to me because, you know, I think, do I lock my doors? Do I, you know, and I, I have a, a son, a, a young son, and so my thought now is that if this homeless shelter is close to us or whatever, I mean, do I need to be more afraid? Do I need to lock my doors? Do I need to get more deadbolts or, or, or something like that? You know, because my husband, like I said, gone, you know, 28 days at a time. And <clears throat> for me, I just, I, safety is number one for me and my son. And that's just the most important thing to me. Safety and my property value, of course. But that, that's just something I want you guys to think about, you know, is the number one thing is safety. If these guys, I don't know what they do, do during the days, or during the day, and I know that a lot of, um, a lot of people that go to homeless shelters, unfortunately, they are parolees. Um, you know, they get out of jail, they have no place to go, so they go to these homeless shelters. And I know this is just a fact, and this is something that's going to happen, whether we like it or not. It's just something that's going to happen, and I would like you guys to think about that and just give it a good thought. Thank you. Thank you so much. I'll start, I'll apologize for my voice. I'm Mark Keller, 1640 Jasmine. I've been in the subdivision since 2003. My fight is not against soul food. It's against the rezoning. Just because I have two little girls. Safety is my concern for my girls, which is pretty much everybody else in the subdivision. I know people talk about home values and stuff like that, but my home is nowhere near what I consider for safety for my daughters. So that is my problem with the zoning. I feel like it drastically affects 
my daughter's safety. I've actually, I've known some homeless people. I've not dealt with what they do. And no, I didn't feel threatened by them, but it's that small percentage that is still there that concerns me. And that's the only argument I have, is I want a safe environment for my daughters. With the school there and the daycare, and you have a community that is zoned for single family, I believe it should stay that way. They've been turned down in other areas. I don't know why. We're on the outskirts of town, or to me, the outskirts. I don't know where the other spots were at. I feel they were turned down because they had a community behind or against soul food, where now you have a fairly close-knit group, single family, all over out there that is against soul food. So that is my only thing is please consider the single family rule over the homeless shelter or the new zoning. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right, guys. Um, in the interest of time, if you haven't, had, if you have something else to add besides safety or property value, I'll hear you. Otherwise, we get the message. <laughs> My name is Stephanie Cullum. I'm at 2535 Gladiola. My concern is not with soul food. My parents are missionaries. They've gotten their hands dirty. They know what's going on. My concern is the location. We live in, South, in Spring Valley, Southwind, Marley's Manor. There's nothing there. It's all homes. If these people need help, which they do, they need help. They need jobs. They need laundry. They need food. There's nothing there. They need access to medical care. There's nothing directly around us. There is foot traffic on South Donaghy, which is going to be a mess. I'm already worried about running into the teenagers while I drive my kid to school. I'm worried about running into the people walking to and from for the college, for everything else. The foot traffic's going to be ridiculous. Trying to walk to Soul Food is going to be nuts. There's already police and everybody there taking stock. I can't tell you how many people speed through my neighborhood trying to get anywhere else. They speed through Donaghy. They speed on Favre. It's a health issue. It's a safety issue at this point because of what could happen to these poor people, that they're already there. So they get hit by a bus. They get hit by somebody driving too fast. At that point now, there's medical bills. There's everything else. And it's having to deal with all of that, too. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Good evening, Aaron Myers, uh, 1660 Churchill Drive. So I'll just preface this. I'll say these are my neighbors. I say these are my friends. So what I want to say is I've got so many thoughts in my mind about this tonight, but like, I mean, what's the strategy on certain things like rejection of tenants, uh, expired, like people that uh, have overstayed, like past that seven day mark, uh, What's the strategy against lawsuits against soul food? Well, but I wouldn't want to see y'all shut down if something happened, like a crime happened and y'all got sued. I mean, are applicants allowed to stay on premises before the full background checks? But those are just thoughts. But what I've always been raised to know is that what's worth doing is worth doing right. The Bible calls us to be good stewards of what we're given. It is time for us to do this right, not just a temporary solution. So I, I don't want to come up here just causing division. I want to come up here and encourage us as a community to come together and make a real solution, a long-term solution for a real need in this community. I haven't heard much of that tonight, unfortunately. We need a plan that will lift them up and enable them to rise, going beyond just enabling them to survive. We have over 300 churches in the Conway area. Let's help them. Thank you. All right, this time I'm gonna call this back into commission. Thank you. What say you fellow commissioners? Uh, Mr. Chairman, I would like to say, first of all, that I do not buy into the stereotype that all homeless people are criminals. I, I, I know that it's not true. We all have, we have a criminal element in Conway, in every neighborhood uh, in Conway. I just wanna get that on the record. 
I would also like to say that my main concern is maintaining the integrity of the residential neighborhood uh, and not change and, and the changing of the zoning would allow for the possibility of duplexes and it is mostly R1 residential out there <coughs> and our primary um, job is to decide on land use what's the best use of land use while taking into consideration you know the neighborhood so that's that's my main concern I mean uh, I mean on the on that point, Marilyn, we did just approve last month the, the duplexes right there across the street from the school, right there in the roundabout. I know. Around the corner, we have monstrosities of Lindsay Management Apartments out the wazoo on golf courses that are just mere minutes from that. Uh, That's across across uh, Dave Ward, yeah, I know. Well, not uh, even across. Yeah, you can just go down that back road. Just keep going on around Donegan. It'll take you to the Greens and... All those residentials. So, I mean, if we're if we're talking about the just the duplex portion, I just wanted to make that. I, I, I kind of agree with the. I, I would have no problem rezoning this R one, uh, R two A. Usually, whenever people come to us, I feel like they have some sort of plan of this is the duplexes, mm -hmm. this is the size, this is you know. So there's some control, and then you have people coming to us, you know, with a plan. And they post it, and so people have to can come and object about that. So I have a problem if this soul food cafe, you know, is there for a little while, and then eventually if they're not, and they find a better place that that is more, you know, hospitable or whatever. Uh, that then this is still R two A, and then mm -hmm. somebody can come in and put, you know, cheap duplexes in here around all this A one R one. So that, I have a problem with going to R2A. I, I don't know if you can do a conditional use in, where's my mm -hmm. thing? Here it is. Uh, if you can yeah. do a con conditional use in R1 or not. So, mm -hmm. but I have a hard time giving a carte blanche to R2A. Mm -hmm. This is the least intrusive zone basically you can ask for. The other is, you know, can't pick it up real quick. Mm -hmm. uh, the commercial zone, okay, um, shelter the homeless, Allow an R two A, R two, two duplex zone, multifamily zone, trailer park, the R M H zone, commercial zone, and that's basically your choices. It doesn't you can't get there with R one. So R two A is probably the least offensive as opposed to multifamily versus trailer. So that's where you're at with it. So that that's the reason why the R two A comes before you as a means to get through the conditional use. I think it's time for the city to do an actual study on what is the most appropriate place for this and because I, I don't want to go through this every time. Mm -hmm. Agreed. Um, Agreed. You know, and as far as the best land use, I, you know, R1 makes the most sense to me. Um, <coughs> and I, I just, I just have a hard time other than that. I, I think it's time for the city to address the problem <coughs> we're we're not a town of 22,000 people anymore, nope. and we need to, just like we have two hospitals now and have grown all that sort of stuff, we need to grow this <laughs> in the best possible spot <coughs> and, uh, and deal with it. So my question for you guys, as we listen to these guys speak back and <coughs> forth, you've talked about security and things um, that the neighborhood is concerned about. I mean, this pl this place is open now. Are there not people visiting this place today? But not staying there. I don't, I don't think so. I don't think it's as big a security issue as, as everybody <laughs> thinks, honestly. Uh, you know, I think there's proper supervision. Um, I've seen the way these people, you know, run their facilities and, and the programs they got in place and all the federal funding oversight in order to get those grants. I mean, it just has to be in place and be done right. You know, I'm president of the Boys and Girls Club here in town, and you don't do everything that you say you're doing you know that funding goes away and it doesn't happen so i'm not worried about the safety as much um you know yeah there needs to be sidewalks through there that's a safety mm -hmm. issue that I, I worry more about than anything because if there were sidewalks there they wouldn't be trespassing and going through these people's that's yards true. uh and, and back and forth that's a and also the infrastructure issue well we're also assuming 
we're also assuming these people are just traversing down Donaghy, and there are multiple ways to get to this location. Yeah, so I guess, and, and what, I've, what I understand is that the <coughs> safety crews probably have more than the ones that get turned around. So where do they go? <coughs> where do they go? That's where you have the beaten path. Well, so that's the case today, yeah, so right? Breathing. So they can't stay at this place today. Yeah. They have to go there, visit, then they have to leave. Kicked out for violent acts, like it shows on here, where they get kicked out for drug abuse, then they get kicked out if they get, you know, that and, and mental health to me is going to be a huge issue with this because how are you going to evaluate somebody that's got a mental health? Because you can have a dual diagnosis, you can have a drug and a mental like schizophrenia, or you can have. I've seen a lot of that work around a lot of that. So how do you figure that out within an emergency time period that quick? How are you able to evaluate that? Fairly evaluate that? So like what you're saying, Jerry, is that they come there today, but is this going to increase the volume of the attraction? To well, no, my my question was is so they. Uh, they have clients today yes. that come to that mm -hmm. facility. Um, they're going to still have clients regardless of what decision we make come to that facility. We're not going to change that. Right. Right. And they can't stay there today. They have to leave. And so the traverse back and forth is not going to stop regardless of what we decide. Three, three to seven days is not going to make a difference. Right. Uh, I mean, I'm just, I'm just posing the question. Because we've heard a lot about security and a lot about, we can't solve that here regardless of what we decide. Because that con, there's still an operation there. Yeah, yeah. So, so they don't know what, what's the two and the eight. When they're kicked out. Right. No, I get it. We're in commission, guys. This is a discussion among us. Thank you. So I get that, that they, uh, people don't always go there for their facility and what they do, but. It's still, yeah. But yeah. the weird thing is, what happens if, like I said, and clearly the rules and all that, it seems like anytime time violates the rules, they're kicked out. Where, like, where is there any type of, there needs to be something. I mean, that's another big thing. Now, one of the things I did uh, appreciate with the pro is I am concerned about, you know, it is fair that the residents are concerned about their property value, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, that's, that's a concern. Right or wrong, I mean, everybody has a right to protect their investments. So, um, just so that everyone knows, all the motions from this uh, meeting have to be in the in in favor of. So, when we make a motion, it'll be in favor of, and it'll either be passed or declined. So, uh, any more discussion on this? Should we get? Sir, do you, you have more questions for them? I was just gonna say the questions like we were concerned about just now about like what happens when someone is. Let me let me bring it back just for a second from the planning perspective. You're you're looking at the zoning mm -hmm. now. We haven't got zoning. sufficient use from this right. yet. So if you want to go there, that might be appropriate for the commercial the use phase of this. But right now you're looking at a, a basic zoning land issue. Is it yeah. appropriate for beach lift right. or not? Right. Then we can go deeper if you like to go deeper. Gotcha. Right. So that's what I was going to point out. This motion in particular that we have for first is just Zoning. just the rezoning from A1 to R1. The next one, the next R2. issue. R2. R2. Yeah, which I'm sorry, to R2. Yeah. A1 to, sorry, it's a, I'm on the wrong page. <laughs> so it's A1 to R2A. R2A, right. Mr. Chairman, I'd like to make a motion to approve. Thank you. Second. There's a motion on the floor to approve the rezoning um, from A1 to R2A. Has been seconded. Is there any discussion? Seeing that there is none, I'll call for a vote. All those in favor? Aye. Let's raise our hand. All those opposed? Rezoning from the All those opposed to the rezoning? Opposed. Aye. All right. Well, that motion is to nine, four to three. You want to do me no good to vote? So just hang it. So there's no point in going forward to the other motion if that motion doesn't carry. So the motion was to support and it did not pass the rezoning. So, you can appeal this to the city council.
appreciate you. We love you very much. We love you guys too. I want you to know that. Don't hold anything against you. Thank you all. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you, Rick. Guys, if you're leaving, if you could do so quickly, we still have business to attain. They had applied at several locations. They have them. They never have. I'm going to report. I'm waiting. City Council. Make them address it. Make them. Well, that's not. I mean, my heart is. Oh, I know. I've got a lot in one of them. I want to find him. Next item on the agenda Watson and Watson request a rezone from A1 to R1. <laughs> we'll wait till they clear the room. I just wanted to let you guys know what was up next. <laughs> guys, if you could clear the room, I still have business to, to hold. Mr. Watson. Yes, sir. I'm Kevin Watson. I live at 680 Paget Road. I'm here tonight uh, to uh, request a rezoning from uh, A1 to an R1 uh, subdivision, which is in close proximity to the matter uh, just mentioned. Um, our plan is to develop about 140 lots over about a four or five year span. Uh, it's just south of Spring Valley, uh, just west of Soul Food Cafe. Uh, and uh, we, uh, we plan on doing that starting at this fall. And homes in there are projected to be uh, 14, 1,500 square foot up to 2,000 square foot. Um, we hope it's uh, similar to uh, Spring Valley, to Salem Woods. And uh, we would uh, entertain your questions and uh, respectfully request rezoning from A1 to R1. Thank you. Is there anybody else here to speak in favor of this? It's a coal that's being addressed, the actual hole. Yes. Rule one. Thank you. Single, single family home. I don't know what you're going into. I know. I know. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> anybody else to speak in favor? Anybody to speak in opposition? I'll remind you guys that the first person gets 10 minutes, each subsequent person will get two. Oh, good evening, my name is David Georgie. I'm president of Spring Valley Property Owners Association, 1680 Hosta. And uh, Kevin, we're not opposed to it. I just, I just exactly, I'm south, what, what exactly, where are we talking about? Do we have a map? Uh, no. As a matter of fact, and I'll present for the commission and this gentleman here. It's the property just south of, of um, which streets are we talking about? The, the, it connects Salem Woods subdivision out to Donahue. Salem There's Salem oh, Woods okay. in the brown. That's, and that's, this that's, is Spring Valley. So jo is that, uh -huh. that's the area of the clearing from Josh over? This picture no. that we have is a little bit better. So yeah. right. there's your subdivision. That's where Soul Salem. Food is. Okay. And it's all, all that right. land right there. All right. Does that make sense? I just sense? want to clear. Yeah. Thank you. Do you want to see no, that? I, I, Anybody else to speak in opposition? Okay. Seeing that there is none, I'll call this into commission. I think this is appropriate use of that land is to just call an expansion, which every good town does. Uh, I'll make a motion to approve. Second. 
feature. There's a motion on the floor to approve Watson to Watson request to rezone from A1 to R1 property located west of South Donaghy Avenue, the south of Spring Valley subdivision. Has been, has been seconded? Yes. Sorry, I couldn't remember where that was. You're good. Sorry, long night. <laughs> um, has been seconded by Justin. Any more questions? All right, seeing if there is none, I'll call for a vote. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. Thank you. Next item on the agenda is dire request for conditional use permit. Oh, that got, no. sorry. I said that at the beginning. The next item, I'm sorry, will be D5, the Covington request to rezone I3 to C3. Is anywhere here to speak for that? Thank you, sir. I'm Jason Covington, uh, 4630 Bay Hill Drive. Um, <clears throat> And we're trying to rezone both sides of Dave Ward to C3 from industrial. Um, we're selling lots off. We're trying to go more retail and get out of the industrial over there. Uh, we want to hold the buildings more to a C3 standard than someone plopping up a metal building if I sell them a lot. That is our main reason for um, getting that. And then every time we're selling a lot, there, somebody's not trying to get a conditional use permit. So we'd kind of just like to go a C3 and cut out and have to um, come here every time and uh, hold them to better building standards. Sir, do you own all of this property? Yes. Y'all have any questions for me? Any more questions? No questions. All right. Mm -hmm. Anybody else to speak in favor? Anybody, do, anybody opposed? All right, I'll call this into commission. I have a question for Brian. Um, sure. What exactly all fits into C3? Yeah. C3 is a most intense commercial zone, so that would allow convenience stores, fast food, Walmart, you name it, basically. Um, so that, that is our most intense commercial. with any of that sir I mean it's not big enough for a Walmart you're not gonna put another Walmart in front of me that makes sense <laughs> but you know maybe another Kroger or something like that you know, competitive by person like this maybe we see uh, so what else is there like if we're saying I, I just don't think it's appropriate to be industrial anymore I just want to make sure we're being yeah I mean that's what you're looking at basically if you got I3 which is intensive industrial which right. could be a Worse. factory or giant you know, meat packing company or yep. something like that. So not that that might ever happen either, but that is theoretically what is allowed in I-3. So it's, to me, it's almost a sideways zone as opposed to a mm -hmm. wholesale mm -hmm. going out in the middle of A-1 somewhere and, and turning it into C-3. Right. That's my take. I mean, you're, you're going from an intensive industrial to an intensive commercial, so it's sideways related. What is the difference between, like, say, a C-2 and a C-3? What, so what are we limiting ourselves to? It scares us to down a notch to... Um, to not what? Not fast food without a conditional use permit, not convenience store without a conditional use permit. A lot of the intensive auto stuff goes away. You can't do auto sales in C3. You can't do um, body shop or you know, motorcycle repair. A whole lot of the auto type uses go away when you go to a C3. I don't really have a problem with any of those being mm -hmm. on that spot either, to be honest. I mean, it's it's, it's a high traffic area there. where somebody like an auto dealership would want to be. I, I, what do you do? You have any plans, or y'all just gonna wait and see what comes? And We're just selling lots and, and wait and see what comes. Okay. Well, typically, like we just told the previous people, that we don't just give carte blanche without a plan. So, I mean, to vote to vote against that premise would be a, a diversion from the from our norm. Sure. And Br Brian, what does our comprehensive plan show? I mean, we have a master plan of this area. The ordinance shows the area right now is in, uh, appropriate for industrial. Okay. So that's a 2004 plan that we need to update. Right. So many ways that we're, the area is going away from Changed. industrial and so many ways with our new shopping center, we're crossing that with all yep. zones industrial. So we're really moving away from that. And the other idea you kind of go with, or at least we kick around and plan, is that's you know, front door of the school. 
place. Mm -hmm. In the past, the head's been to the clocks and that kind of thing, and they're not bad, but is that what you want the front door to tell you to do or sure. something different? You know? and so, so here's what I would say, um, just to kind of be sure we kind of get what we want out of this, and Covington, you can tell me to jump rope, I guess, but um, I would say let's do something like a C2 if you'd be okay with that. And then that way, at least if somebody wants to do something that's a little bit out of the norm of a C2, they at least got to come and get a conditional use or rezone that particular one and maybe give us a little more oversight over that type of stuff. Is that going to be a huge and issue? And frankly, the other living death row, if we're going to get a C2, we, we could build a building that's got more metal on it that's industrial and then come for conditional use, which you'd have to do anyway with the C2. And my members don't think in that, but so I'm trying to keep someone else from doing the C2. But a C2 would be have the time come to get a conditional use to make it something. Well, the hybrid won't allow retail without a conditional use permit. C2 does. Right. So there's a differentiation there where hybrid, yes, you could get a factory or something along those lines, but you can't do retail, rental retail, real time rental retail without getting a conditional use permit in, in C3, I mean I3. Yeah. Personally think C3 is better than I3, but I, you know, y'all, whatever y'all want to do. I, I don't have a problem with the C3. I, I, I mean, an automotive dealership doesn't scare me, an automotive parts plant doesn't scare me, none of that scares me. I think it's better than what we could have now. I mean, with this area of Dave Ward, and I've always been a proponent of more oversight on Dave Ward and the things that go on to Dave Ward. So uh, I'm leery to approve anything that gives more carte blanche than what we have now. I mean, I'm, I'm perfectly fine with them coming back in front of us because then with if they apply for conditional use, we have the availability to put the conditions on there that we need to in the interest of the city in the interest of the, the residents. So uh, I'm fine with it staying with exactly where it's at. I mean, the stated useless retail, right, which C2 would provide. Y'all can go to C2 if you want to. That's, you can down zone within the Frank County group. You can go to, from C3 to C, C3 to C2 if you like. Well, he you said he would rather down. keep I3 than C2, so, I mean, it's his choice. What do you guys think? Motion. I, would like I think to make we a vote on this, and then if we wanted to vote on a C2, we can. And Agreed. then, it, and if he just says, uh, no, don't vote on a C2, then at least we have that to just leave it what it, like it is now. Indeed. But yeah. traditionally, we haven't just given car blanche for things like uh, C3 without oversight. I motion, agree. Sir? I don't like the, the R2A, you know, just especially in certain areas. I just still think that C3 is better than I. Yeah, I agree with that. But, I, Go ahead, Brian. you know, whatever whatever happens, I'm not. I'm whatever you guys think. I'm, I'm okay with the, the C3. Whatever you guys think. You're, you're I make a motion to approve, and then we can go on from there. There's a motion on the floor to approve. Coming to property's request to rezone from I3 to C3. Second. The property located at 65 and 7, 55 and 700 day word drive has been seconded by Brandon. Oh. Yes, sir. Go ahead. You can do it, Gloria. <laughs> Give it to him. I was there about 10 minutes ago. Uh, we need a buzzer. We need a buzzer system. Anyway, has been, uh, has been seconded. Any discussion? Since there is none, I'll ask for a show of hands. All those in favor? Aye. Motion carries. Nay. <laughs> Get on the record. <laughs> on it. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Chuck. <laughs> Next item, court request to rezone from A1 to R1. Grant Gordy, 4915 Tyler Street. First timer request <laughs> request requesting as you said the uh, adjacent property to my my uh, primary residence from A one to R one. What you gonna do? 
build a, actually um, modify the existing structure there, have the property replatted, which is assuming everything goes well tonight and tomorrow night. We already have it teed up to be replatted uh, on Wednesday and build a single, single family structure uh, on the, uh, the, the new plat, as it were. How in the world is this still A1? You got a little farm good, over there, Grant? Good, good question. <laughs> then I, I may or may not own. have had a few chickens at one time. <laughs> <laughs> you got to get rid of your chickens if we change this? Uh, some no. something got rid of those I on mean, my behalf. Oh, really? Yes. Oh, yeah, yes. <laughs> yeah, I'm chickenless. So you're going to build a new home here? I modify the existing structure just from an aesthetic standpoint. Mm -hmm. Have the property replatted as it sits on a large lot. Okay. And then have the... the uh, northern part of the 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 lot uh for a new dwelling yes ma'am okay <coughs> any further questions for grant thank you sir appreciate it mm -hmm. anybody else to speak in favor anybody opposed call that into commission I drive by this place every single day of the world. It's an empty corner. It's an empty corner that I have no idea why it's A1. Mm -hmm. uh, and the property next to it that he's also buying is, is it needs some work. And it would be nice to have somebody put some lipstick on that. Uh, I make a motion to approve. Second. Oh. <laughs> Give it to Delaney. Yeah, yeah that's easy. Okay. There's a motion on the floor to <coughs> rezone Gordy requests from A1 to R1, property located at 2E Lane, has been seconded by Delencia. Any further questions? Seeing that there is none, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? <laughs> motion carries. <laughs> I was going to give you a chance that time. I said I. <laughs> I was good. Yeah. D7. Next item on the agenda. I don't want to butcher your last name. How you say that? Tilkey. Tilkey. Okay. Joe Tilkey requests to rezone from I3 to C3. Property at 1200 Thomas G. Wilson Drive, 1300, 1350, and 1400 East West Martin Drive. Mm -hmm. E.W. Martin, yes. Oh, sorry. E.W. Martin yeah. Drive. I, I butchered that, sorry. Well, with the mall there, it kind of uh, pushed the side of the industrial side of it. Um, I only, not only do I have this property, I've got over half a million square feet of I-3 space adjacent to this, or just across the field from it. So there's plenty of I-3 property there, but the, um, with the mall there, it's kind of running off anybody with the industry, and going through the roundabouts, and then when they put the mall in, the, e the Thomas G. Wilson property, that north property line was a high pressure sewage line. They decided to route it around that one lot on Thomas G. Wilson before they crossed the road. I don't know why, but so now it's just small lots. And uh, um, you know, the I-3, the last two I-3 people I had, I sent them over to see Brad Lacey to go to the <laughs> tech park because I can't, I can't support them out there, not in small little buildings like this. That one there's been vacant. The other two buildings there, they're both under long-term leases. People have been there. FedEx has been in that one for 17 years, 20 years. Uh, no one's going anywhere. There's nothing new. Habitat for Humanities in that other one. I let them in there. And so it's not like I'm tearing anything down to build something and with that big sewage line right there, I wouldn't, couldn't do anything anyway. And so um, I just want to make it more, it's more about those two front lots there, make it more appealing to some small business, you know, mm -hmm. baseball card shop or something. But with I-3, I can't do that. And uh, I'm just kind of landlocked really with the, uh, with the mall right there. So that's why I'm requesting to change C3 to open up my options so I can build something for somebody or at least lease that building out. <laughs> okay. Any further questions? All right, thank you, sir. Thank you. Anybody else to speak in favor? Anybody opposed? I'll call it into commission. Rigo State. I think that this is actually an appropriate use of C3. <laughs> yeah. He agrees with it, I'm in. <laughs> yes. 
Chris would agree with Matt. Yeah. <laughs> I'll make a motion to approve. Second. <laughs> There's a motion on the floor to approve. Has been seconded by Wendy. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Just twice, y'all getting, y'all getting into a bad habit of approving carte blanche. Yeah. Thanks, Joe. Next item on the agenda, bird request for a conditional use permit. Good evening. Good evening. I am purchasing a property there at 1344 Robbins. Uh, that's almost right across from where the Boys and Girls Club is and just right around the corner from the new courthouse. And I want to change that and get a conditional use permit so I can use that as a law office. Yeah, I'm sorry, your name, please. Angela Bird. Okay, thank you. Okay. Any questions for Ms. Bird? Thank you. I guess they have what they need. Yeah. Wonderful. Well, you've heard a lot of people talk tonight, so I'll just be brief. And it's really hard for me to do. <laughs> Anybody else to speak in favor? Anybody opposed? I'll call it into commission. I got no problem with this either. A quiet office, you know, we've done it all up and down Donaghy. Kind of seems appropriate. Yep. So this is on Robbins. Right. Mm hmm. Yeah, just right there next to the Boys and Girls Club. It's yeah. The second house. Yeah. 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 I mean, I think it's a great spot for it. Sure. If she wants to put it there, rock yeah, on. A little bit. Uh, some of that area through there needs a little bit of work. A little love. Yeah, little love. love. Yeah. Lipstick, as somebody said earlier. <laughs> Lipstick. Yeah. I make a motion to approve the. There's a motion request. on the floor to approve. I'll second. <laughs> <laughs> Has been seconded. <laughs> Uh, so there's a motion on the floor to approve the bird request for a conditional use permit to allow restricted office in an R2 zone for property located at 1344 Robin Street has been seconded. All those in favor? With the staff, Aye. Uh, with the staff recommended conditions. With the staff recommended conditions. All those opposed? Well, they didn't put any conditions on it. Didn't tell you. <laughs> staff recommended. Well, we didn't. You gonna be working at two in the morning? Not usually at two. No, if I you're in there looking at books and doing law research at two, I really don't have a problem with that. I tried to do that. Sure. There you okay. go. You, you may not want to put condition uh, hours on. I threw that on there because we typically make a recommendation, and that's one of them we do in this situation. But if you feel it's been unnecessary, then that's. But well, this this goes on. just with her, though, right? It's her conditional use permit. Not it's not. Is that. it the well? That's that's so one of the conditions. I don't have a problem with another law office coming in, but if it was a different, if they wanted to put something beside the law office, mm -hmm. they would have to come before us. Not unless you put a condition on there to that effect. It runs with the land. Every office, restricted office, does it. Unless you put some kind of condition on there that it's for quiet a office, office or yeah. quiet office or sole reserve. Yeah, I would. I would want. I don't know if we've already voted, have we? I don't know why we're talking about it if we've already voted. Didn't we? Yes. But if, if uh, I mean, I would put the quiet office conditional use if I was going to, but I didn't make the motion or second it, so I don't know if I have any place to talk here. No, it's a, yeah. I think it's a done deal. I don't think it's a, personally, it, it's a no. safe yeah. thing in that area with the hours of operation or whatever. <laughs> It's a self-regulating business. It so if she decides to sell it one day and someone else has a quiet office space, I can't imagine that it would be inappropriate for that area. So my my vote sticks. Okay. Motion carries. Motion carries. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Do we have one more thing? I think we do. West request for conditional use permit. Last but not least here. Sorry West about, request sorry for about your wait. Hey, that's okay. Thanks for your patience. To allow a child care facility in an R2 zone for property located at 2425 Tyler Street. Yeah, I'll make it quick and painless. My name is Elizabeth West, and I live at 2943 Highway 287 in Hattieville. Um, we are purchasing um, this uh, property at 2425 Tyler Street. 
Um, if you're familiar with it, it was built for a child care center. It is set up. That's, it is set up at, to be a child care center, um, and that's what we plan on doing. Um, it, it was brought to my attention that there may be an issue or concern about traffic um, for the area, and I just wanted to go ahead and give you my plans on that. Um, as far as um, the land that the building sits on, there is additional space to add four parking spots on the left side of the building for employees or parents to park. Um, there's also enough room in the front of the building um, where there is a grassy area that we can also pave over and that will add two additional spots. Um, it has a circle drive, three um, cars, possibly four, could be in that at one time, as well as two parking spots that are already in use. Um, this allows for 11 cars to be parked at one time. Um, during times of drop off and pick up, uh, 6 a.m. to 7 a.m. and 5 p.m. to 6 p.m., the circle drive lane um, located under the awning will be manned by two individuals to ensure for a safe and efficient flow of traffic. Um, upon enrollment, I will um, speak to each parent and instruct them of the plan of action for dropping off and picking up their child. Um, this will be done to, prior to the child's first day and they will be notified that if they need to come in and speak with a teacher or have business inside that's gonna take you know longer than pick up or drop off, um, that they need to park and come in leaving the circle drive um, to have a continuous flow of traffic. Um, in addition to that, I would like to ease people's minds and let them d know that I do have um, experience <laughs> running uh, traffic flow. Um, I recently worked in two counties and did um, a food drive. I ran it and got the volunteers and everything. So I'm very familiar with getting people in and out <laughs> in a timely manner. Thank you. One question. Ma'am. <laughs> what are the hours and um, days of operation? Monday through Friday, possibly Saturdays. I haven't gotten with my licensing agent yet to um, to verify this. Um, 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. And that includes Saturday too? As of now. Monday through Friday, 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. Mm -hmm. And what time on Saturday? Saturdays will probably be 8 to uh, eight to three. Eight to three on Saturday. Any other questions? How many kids? Um, I believe before when they were licensed, they were licensed for like forty-eight. Mm -hmm. Um, we won't be licensed for any more than Good. than what forty-eight. Mm -hmm. Thirty-two hundred square square feet. feet. No, it's mm -hmm. twenty-five. Is it? Okay. That's what it says on here. I'm just. Is that, what's the age group? Um, it'll be six weeks to 12 years. Six to 12. And then how many staff members managing the children? Um, I plan on having six full-time, three part-time. Of course, that will be scattered out through the days. That's all, I mean, that all, that's all driven by her license requirements. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Depending on my enrollment, you know, how our enrollment is. Any other questions? I'm good. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Anybody else to speak in favor of this? Hi, my name is Kim Tyler, and I kind of feel like the kid, the last one on the school bus when the bu driver looks up there. But anyway, I'm part of the Tyler Family Trust, part, Tyler Family Partnership. We have owned that property since the early 80s. Um, in that area, we own the land uh, directly to the east, and we own everything to the south of it before it hits over there on Arkansas Avenue area. And uh, this uh, was built in the mid-80s. It was operational as a... Um, daycare until around 2008, 2009. And it's just been sitting vacated, uh, waiting for the right right connection. 
uh, little little story there. But anyway, um, but it was um, it's in a great location and it is R two. And um, it, back when it was started, it kind of as you see in your packet went through some. Um, grandfather clauses they come in the r2a all this was already there before this came about so in order for it's been non-operational for over a year so therefore you have to come in front and they would be purchasing the property at this particular lot in kimberly edition replat do you have any questions for me but we are the landowners doesn't appear so thank you okay never had any problems with traffic or anything I've owned it since the 80s. So well, she said live. Yeah. <laughs> Actually worked there in college. Thank you, ma'am. Thanks. Anybody else to speak in favor? Having seen none, anybody to speak against? I'm uh, Herbie Galloway, and this is my wife, Gwen. Uh, we live uh, on Sarah Circle, which is the cul-de-sac that's just immediately to the east of the proposed facility. Uh, I've got some, want to speak in opposition to it, and uh, I've got some copies here that have these points in an email that I sent to uh, Shelly Mail and uh, Wesley Pruitt. I'm opposed to the uh, approval of a conditional use permit for the daycare facility at lot 5A, Kimberly Edition. Uh, my wife and I are longtime residents at that uh, location, which is, uh, if you're not familiar with it, I think you, I don't know if you've got a plat or whatever, but it's the cul-de-sac off of Tyler Street yep. that is just east of the proposed facility. Or the, proposed, the facility's there, but the where they are proposing the uh, condi conditional use permit. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> From um, what I understand, uh, the width of lot A is uh, not but 62 feet. And that uh, I don't think would leave enough uh, parking space for the employees, the number of employees that they're going to be needing for that facility. Uh, that's one uh, main point. The, the other uh, thing that's the main thing there is the traffic. The traffic already is bad there. The traffic pattern uh, uses Manor Street as an arterial to the high school campus. So the high school in the morning and high school traffic in the evening is uh, volume there is uh, uses a route already makes it extremely difficult to turn right and impossible to turn left onto Tyler Street from Sarah Circle mm -hmm. from 745 to 815 in the morning. The situation in the afternoon with the high school traffic coming there from about 3 o'clock to 340 and turning onto Tyler from Manor is not much better. It is better, but it's not much better. Traffic coming out of the daycare facility will have this same difficulty with the proximity of the uh, daycare facility to the uh, Manor Street. It's just two houses, well, yeah, it'd be two, two houses from the entrance to Sarah Circle there. Uh, westbound traffic on Tyler Street turning into the daycare facility will have a greater difficulty as they will need to cross and actually turn in to the facility that way. They'll have to cross that eastbound traffic. Any delay in loading or unloading in the morning or the afternoon will make the traffic all that much more difficult because I'm pretty sure the size of the facility, it's gonna cause traffic to back up in the facility. When it backs up in the facility, it's going to cause it, you can't turn into the facility, so it'll back up in the street. Uh, it's my understanding that uh, the lot 
is only uh, 62 feet wide. I believe that's what uh, Mr. Patrick told me that that lot, and I'm not sure I'm with the number of uh, employees that I figure she's probably gonna have to uh, employ, that that's not enough room for parking for the facility. And it uh, would probably mean that uh, circle driveway is going to have to be used for the loading and unloading. And if that's true, then whenever traffic stops there, it's going to make traffic in that uh, circle drive have to stop and there's not that much room there for that many cars, especially when all of us, uh, everybody in Conway seems to want to drive to a daycare center, want to drive to a school, the people that work on one side of the center, one side of the city live on the other side of the city. And so we're all going back and forth like this during the morning, So, but the traffic is especially bad with the high school campus proximity and uh, Manor Street there causing that area right there. That uh, Manor Street now is used quite he quite heavily for the high school traffic in the morning and the afternoon. Uh, I'd appreciate both your consideration and the uh, consideration of the city council in the regarding uh, a disapproval of allowing a daycare facility at that particular location. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Ma'am? I'll just add, um, you have something you want to say? The, um, you've already mentioned. Uh, and your regards name? Sorry. Will you state your name for the record? Uh, Gwen Galloway at 1616 Sarah Circle. Thank you, ma'am. And uh, the street, our street, we've been there since 1988. And um, it was an existing daycare, um, which is no longer working. But, um, a lot has happened in the 29 years in this city, which many of you have been here that long. And a lot of traffic goes up and down Tyler, to and from Hogan, to and from Salem. Um, but what I wanna add, you've already mentioned about some other property that's been rezoned tonight, is, is a cascade effects. Once you do it one place, it just dominoes. We started with UCA and it's gone all the way down Donaghy uh, to quiet office, other businesses, well, the same thing's gonna happen to Tyler. What used to be owned property now is become rental property. It is already residential, but once this starts, it's gonna all become other businesses, <coughs> quiet office, and it's gonna just change. Uh, but our concern already is the number of traffic turning around in the cul-de-sac. Um, that has increased quite a bit in the 29 years we've been there. Uh, one of the things that he did not mention is we've mentioned the traffic on Manor getting to and from the high school. But when there's a train, that light stops at Donaghy and it goes all, it almost backs up to Manor and you cannot turn in and out of our street or it's however long it takes for the train to move. And then it may change, the light may change two or three times before it clears. And if she's gonna have 11 parking spaces for the employees, then the parents will be turning around in that cul-de-sac. Thank uh, you, ma'am. We're trying to turn. We're at time, I thank you. I got a question, Mrs. Galloway. Mm -hmm. Do you remember when the daycare that was there quit operating? No, it's been several years. Okay, mm -hmm. do you, Mrs. Tyler, do you remember when, what has it been doing since then? It's been vacant. Okay. Just been vacant since 2008? Yes. Has it been vacant since 2008? 2009. 2009? So it hasn't operated as a daycare since 2009? Yes. Okay. Yes. Thanks. Sorry. The, uh, That's it. I lost my thought there. Oh, the uh, Thank daycare. You. How many daycares have been closed, I guess, about yeah. three years, hasn't yes. it? She answered that question. Thank you, Thank sir. You. Thank you, guys. But it's done. Uh, Time's up. Time's up. <laughs> Time's up. <laughs> Thank you. Anybody else to speak in opposition? Seeing that there is none, I'll call it into commission. Just a point of clarification. Um, how many parking spaces did you say you would have there? And and you're going to have um, approximately six full-time employees and three part-time employees? Yes, mm -hmm. there's six 
Yeah, it's just a quick one in town. Yeah. Yeah, it's just a very tight time. It's <coughs> just about to happen. Is that right? Thank you. Anything else? I drive this road every day, and traffic is terrible on this road. I, 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 I knew it was a, you know, daycare at one point, and you kind of see it sitting there. I just didn't know what had happened to it, and never seen anybody in and out of there right now. Um, Forty-eight kids seems <laughs> like a lot, um, the, and it's 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 uh, sad because. I know this place was built as a daycare, and it needs to kind of be a daycare. I mean, there's not like you can just completely tear down a building and and make money doing that. You just, I see both sides of it, but golly, Tyler needs to be avoided at certain times of the day, or you just, you you might as well drive a little rock. <laughs> mm -hmm. So, I don't know. It's kind of a catch twenty two. We're not the same size city we were in the eighties, nineties, or two thousand and eight even. Um, there's just so much more traffic and if this was four lane or even three lanes with a turning lane or something through there I probably wouldn't have as big a problem with this and I think that's just an infrastructure issue um, so I, I don't know I, I see both sides of it and as somebody that has got to drive down that road every day I, I, I feel for these people too because golly uh, 48 kids it just seems like way more trips than 240 a day to me um, with but I don't know. I, I, I don't know. I, I see both sides. I went through a similar situation with my daughter at the preschool house on Hogan, and they had 36 kids. Same situation, a house converted into a daycare, CUP, uh, you know, across from Goodwin Heights. Same deal. And you only had a certain amount of seconds or minutes to get through that thing, get your kid dropped off, and get out of the way for the rest of the cars to come in and sure. the same problem. Hmm. Any other discussion? Okay. Uh, yeah, I don't, I don't. Well, you don't see anybody that, you know, wh what else would you do with this piece of property? Uh, somebody go in and renovate it, try to turn it into a duplex. I mean, I highly doubt you're going to get any kind of investment out of it and trying to convert it back to a single family residence. I, I don't think right. it has enough parking either. I mean, there has to be something to do to get enough parking just for the workers, much less the drop off pick off hey if we approve or don't approve this can it be appealed to city council or are we the end all be all on this we could not if we make an appeal to the city council we have 30 days to appeal to the council okay so yeah, we're not but mm -hmm. conditions as you see fit on it and number of kids or a number of kids i think would help a lot with the traffic i mean uh, obviously i uh, uh, number of kids is also regulated when you get a daycare permit mm -hmm. correct me if i'm wrong Staff. Yeah, the staff is regulated. The amount of kids you can have per square footage is regulated. Yeah. Exactly. All that other stuff. When it was there before, it was 48. So okay. there's nothing to keep them from just doing well, 48 how, how again. Many, yes, it was 56 before? Yes. Oh, okay. That is a lot for that space. With, with the same amount of uh, faculty or? Yes. Yes. Yeah, I'd, 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 I would want to. I would want to at least have more parking before I could approve forty-eight or fifty-six kids. I mean, well, just, the, the traffic scares me to death. Much less the safety issue of it. And perfect. when you're dropping off small kids, that is not a quick mm -mm. drop off. You 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 got to let them in. You got to you know. Oh, I forgot the passy. I forgot this. The bottle. The this. Whatever. I, it's just not as quick as, as older kids of, all right, run along, little Johnny. Yeah. Well, you know, it's just, yeah. I'll, but, yeah, yeah, I'll say this. If she thinks it's a viable business plan, then it's a, it's up to her to make the business prosperous, right? So 
it, she's asked to recognize that she's entering this venture that it, she has to manage through the traffic and manage through uh, the building space and everything. So she's at least analyzed that before she brought it to us. What we need to decide is, is this the appropriate use for this land? Right. Not whether it's the right business. This I make a motion <laughs> that we approve Wait. with still in the He's still thinking. Go ahead. Guys. With <laughs> the <laughs> hours of operation okay, of you. Monday through Friday from 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. and Saturdays 8 to 3. Thank you so much. No other conditions requested. So there's a motion on the floor to approve because um, all the, uh, I'm sorry, there's a motion on the floor to approve to allow a child care facility at R2 zone for property located at 2425 Tyler Street. Is there a second? Nope. I second it. Marilyn seconded it. All right. Oh, right so on. the motion does have a condition of business hours to be Monday through Friday, 6 a.m. to 6 p.m., Saturday, 8 a.m. to 3 p.m. Any further discussion? We're not going to put any restriction, no restriction on, the on the kids, the members of? No, because that is state mandated and That's state, state mandated. required. Okay. I'm not about to get into that business. Yep, gotcha. We're in land use. Yep, yep. not doing it. <laughs> any other discussion? All right, I'll call us to a vote. All those in favor? Aye. 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 All those opposed? Aye. Did I'm just going to sit here. I don't like it. I don't know. I, All right. If I voted nay, I'd be a selfish nay because that traffic is <laughs> terrible. All right, show our hands because I didn't see that. I thought Wendy voted twice. All those in favor, raise your hand. <laughs> Aye. Uh-oh. All those opposed? Motion passes. Brian didn't vote. I didn't vote a thing. Oh, no, we still got one more. Crap. All right, the last item. Good luck, guys. On the agenda, request to amend Conway zoning ordinance. Request to amend the City of Conway Zoning Ordinance Article 301.2 and Addendum A to clarify the definition of office and allowed zoning restrictions for pharmacy and pharmaceutical compounding. Excuse me. Mr. Patrick. Yes, sir. You're Speak on. You're on. <laughs> Won't be but an hour or two for me to explain this. Oh, all right. Yes. <laughs> You'll be here by yourself. <laughs> Mr. Clausen, could you get us all dinner on Mr. She's Patrick's tab? <laughs> you got well, two minutes as the first speaker. <laughs> Okay, I think I can try to do it in that set amount of time. That's what time is now. Do we need to pause every day and people want to hang out so they can say dumb little things? No, we're not going there. Oh. <laughs> I saw Mark start that too, so. I, I knew you looked familiar. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay. Thank you. If, if Miss Tyler would. <laughs> you kicking her out. Kicking her out. <laughs> um. What we have is a conflict in our zoning ordinance, number one. It talks about office, and in the list of offices, um, there's the word pharmacy used. And then if you look in clinical, dental, medical, osteopathic, chiropractic, pharmacy is also used in there. Um, so this, two things. Th this kind of came about because of the words pharmacy. And when I started looking to that and how it had a conflict in the ordinance, um, it also led to the office zoning definition was not very good and it needs cleaning, uh, clarifying at least. So what I'm proposing and I have an ordinance prepared for the council is to take the definition of office, which also has a bunch of archaic uses in it. it, it I'll read it basically a place structure where a particular <coughs> type kind of business is transacted or a service supplied such as a public office, business headquarters, etc. uses include but are not limited to addressing, duplicating, mailing lists, stenographer, telephone messages, and similar, advertising agency, clinic including pharmacy, that's where that appears, computer data processing, mobile home sales without a display. This is just kind of an odd mixture of things that have probably been jammed in there over the years and whatever, and I think we all have a basic understanding of what office is, and that just kind of muddies the waters, I think. So there's also another definition for general office, and I believe we're probably gonna wanna take that one out too. Talks about a place for regular transaction of business, but not to include occupation, retail sales. I don't even know what that means, but not to include occupation. Anyway, retail sales, transfer of manufacturer goods, 
for storage of commodities. So that's, those are the two definitions mainly we have to work with. There are actually four definitions in there, but the other two, restricted office, um, which we dealt with tonight with the bird um, conditional use permit. I think that one's fairly workable. That was 2009 when we created that, that definition. Um, so that's in there. I um, believe that one's okay. There's another one that talks about office warehouse and it talks about an, an office being in a warehouse as a function, which makes sense. So those two I think are okay. So with that, I propose that we create a new office definition that says, a business providing administrative, executive, management, professional services, or medical clinic. Examples include architect, accountant, engineer, attorney, doctor, dentist, or similar profession. That's the new definition that this has moved forward. Um, so like I say, along with that, we also take out the word pharmacy as part of clinical, dental, medical, osteopathic, chiropractic, optical. Pharmacy was in the list of that, and I believe that goes way back in the years when a pharmacy might have been part of a clinic setting, mm -hmm. more of an in-house type right. um, pharmacy where a doctor also, oh, well, on your way out, you know, get some drugs here on your, on your way home. <laughs> and that's really not a thing anymore, at least in this. The pharmacists still in the dentist anymore? <laughs> Shouldn't be, probably. They also are located in a van. Right. <laughs> I won't touch that one, but, um, but anyway. Um, so well, that's been some confusion over the years because if you look, pharmacy was allowed in all these zones. If you go along that path, you go, well, clinic, dental, medical, pharmacy is allowed in, in all these zones, including office and industrial. And I don't think that's the intent. I think the intent was that was more a part of a clinic setting. Mm -hmm. right. So we take it out of that. We fix it in the office definition. And there's also another thing that's not in the matrix here, but it explains where basically there's another that says pharmacy, and it has the appropriate zones that match up where it should be as far as like commercial zones and a conditional use in office zones and that type of thing. So anyway, um, that's what we're trying to do is just trying to clean up some of this conflict in the ordinance and some of the language and trying to bring the office definition to a more current yeah. definition. And, and that's what I got, <coughs> if y'all got any questions. So for clarification, for, or, or maybe for my edification, um, going forward in your matrix, office will be allowed in anything C1 or lower in that top line. And then the restricted use will be R2A through HR. Right. Okay. And that's basically what's laid out right now in the ordinance, but it's got that confusing, because we have office and then we also have restricted office and yep. they're similar but different because the restricted office has those conditions and things built into it that are part of basically repurposing a house or that kind of thing like the one that happened tonight. Um, so I think it's good to have that one pulled away from the other office, and that's what we're trying to do is, and it was kind of understood before that that's where that was falling, but it's confusing because it didn't say exactly restricted office. So we're pulling that out and we have restricted office category, and we have office. So they're kind of similar but different. Yep. So all the C's mean conditional uses? Yep. Yes. And the X's mean not? Allowed by right. Yeah. Okay. They're allowed. So is there a recent there case study that's brought this to light, or does this just show where it slowly kind of became evident? Well, I wasn't going to bring it up, but um, <laughs> <laughs> basically the medical marijuana thing is, yeah. is what brought this to light because pharmacy is um, interesting. Mm -hmm. where we're, that's how we have to treat it. The state law the, the, or the amendment basically says that we're supposed to treat it like a retail pharmacy. Our definitions don't really have retail pharmacy, but it's kind of understood that that's what, by our definition, what pharmacy is in retail, meaning more like you sell balloons and Cokes and <coughs> stuff along with the drugs, too. So anyway, that's what kind of brought it to light when we started looking at it, because we've had some people go, well, I can do this in an I-3. And I'm like, well, no, you can't, because that's not really what the intent of that was. The intent was that was supposed to be more of a clinical type pharmacy and so forth. And so this helps clarify that, I think, so that we put them in the right zones by conditional use or by right, whatever. But uh, but that's what kicked it off. And then investigating that, I started looking at it, and it just seemed like, okay, this is a good chance to clean this stuff up anyway. Do you already have people asking about that? Do we have people? Already asking? Oh, yeah. Yeah, we got voted and approved. There are people asking. I mean, oh, yeah. it starts in, like, T minus – September the okay, where have I been? 18th, I believe, is the deadline to get your application. In medical marijuana? Yeah. No, I knew that we voted it in. I mean, if we had people we asking about putting a pharmacy in Conway. Really? Wow. Okay. Hey, catch up oh, yeah. on your own time. <laughs> there's a there's an ordinance on the floor. Is there a motion to accept? 
motion. Oh, wait, sorry. Is there any more questions for Mr. Patrick before I take a motion? <laughs> Did he really say that to me? Uh, I'll make a motion to approve. Mm, to, to, to amend it. All right, there is a motion to accept or to approve the amended ordinance. Is there a second? Yes, second. Second by Delencia. Is there any comments? I, I guess it is open to the public if anybody wants to. <laughs> yeah. You got anything? I've got a list of questions <laughs> here, good? Brian, that I'm okay. wanting to. <laughs> Kidding. I mean, we can't exclude a, a medical marijuana. As long as you look at it as a retail pharmacy, because that's the way the rules were written. Yeah. I mean, we can. All right. There's a motion on the floor to request uh, to amend the ordinance. Has been seconded. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Pass. Good work, Brian. Thanks. I feel Mr. Like Chairman, see. seeing that there be no other business. That's a lot of money. These binders. I, yeah, mean. I feel like somebody. Point, <coughs> point of order. Point, point of order. Point of order. Like Sorry. Mr. Chairman, seeing as there is no more business, I make a motion to adjourn. I second. There is a motion on Aye. the floor to adjourn. Has been seconded. All those in favor? Yep. Aye. Aye. All those opposed? I want to stay longer. <laughs> Let's talk about it, Wendy. Motion passes. I, I knew we did.